scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Very popular scripture. Jesus was teaching. Having resurrected, he was having his last session with the disciples who would now be apostles before he would leave. And then they asked him a question. They said, will you at this time restore the nation of Israel? And he replied by saying, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the father has put in his care. Then verse 8 says, but ye shall receive power. Listen carefully. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be not men of God, witnesses, witnesses unto me. Then he begins to apportion territories. He would have said, you will be witnesses unto me all over the world, full stop. But now he's teaching them because shortly he would be leaving and they would be the ones to start. And he's telling them, look, 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 look. The goal is the utmost part of the earth, but it will be broken into territories. First, Jerusalem. Then, Judea. Then, Samaria. And then it will expand to the utmost part of the earth. The first crusade that happened after Christ resurrected, the Bible says that something happened on the day of Pentecost. Now, Peter was preaching. And when Peter began to preach in chapter 2 of Acts, the Bible says that the men were caught to the heart. Listen carefully. And then they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, repent for the remission of your sins and you shall receive this promise. This is the part I'm going to. He said, for this promise is for you. Are you seeing now? For your children oh dear look at this little boy for you for your children for your children's children then he now says as many as are far off even those that the lord will call sometimes you you, you think that the, the bible is too detailed why would god he would have just said this promise is for everyone after all joel already told us he said i shall pour out my spirit on all flesh so why tell us again it is to you your children children's children and to those who are far off as many as the lord will call god's dealings is territorial that means a true believer's assignment is to look at the whole world but to focus on the territory you have been apportioned that is where your ranking that is where your marking that is what authorizes you to be apportioned new spheres, both in the spirit and physically. Our obsession for more, our obsession for increase sometimes robs us from the capacity to be faithful. Write this down. Our mandate... As matured believers is to keep the ordinances of God alive across our apportioned territories our mandate in terms of territorial impact is to be preservers of the ordinances of God to ensure that every territory has a representation of the presence, the power, the system, the glory of God 
in that territory. If we fail to carry this out, then we have failed woefully. Listen again, that our mandate as matured believers with respect to kingdom advance is not just to be preachers, not just to be prosperous, that's important, not just to build churches and ministries, but that we become custodians and preservers of the ordinances of God within the territory that has been apportioned to us. That means there is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Zaria. Listen carefully. There is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Nigeria. There is a dimension of God he never wants to be lost in Jos, in Kogi State. And those who are mandated to be preservers of those ordinances are believers. Not just those who advance and win souls, but we are like spiritual librarians mandated to make sure that there is a system that preserves the ordinances of God. This, in my opinion, is one of the biggest mistakes of the Western church. They, they, they lost a part of their assignment. They were obsessed with expansion and they forgot that they were mandated. So there was a generation that lost touch with another generation. And everybody now is guessing his opinion. There is a curriculum of a God that has been apportioned to that territory. And it was within the power of all the men of God within that dispensation to walk with the Holy Spirit and to preserve that truth. When a dimension of God apportioned to a territory is lost, they cannot hold certain dimensions of Him. The church in Nigeria is a wonderful place. You know that I love the church. I love the body of Christ. But I think that we have to trust God in this time and in this season to our idea of kingdom advance is in many ways faulty. And we must trust God together as a united body to correct ourselves because there is this obsession for expansion and there's nothing wrong with that but it looks to me like our concept of kingdom advance is establishing our presence is in as many territories as possible whilst there is a dimension of that we are largely missing it because the idea is not just to establish our presence as the man of God or the denomination, our idea is to make sure that in every territory, there are men who represent portals for kingdom advance. That there be no territory that is barren of a true apostolic and prophetic community that represents the individuals who can host God to his expectation within a territory. If we fail to do that, we have missed a lot. If you're understanding me, say amen. One of my greatest fear in life is finding out that I did not live my life and I did not do ministry to God's expectation. It is a very tragic state because the Bible says that our works will be tried with fire. Are we together now? Tonight, tonight is, 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 more, is more like a minister's conference. It's a challenge to believers and everybody, but the challenge is, is for those who have been trusted with some measure of spiritual influence over people, groups, territories. We must trust God for understanding on how kingdom advance happens. There is too much guessing in the body of Christ and everybody believes he is right. But our results are showing that there is inefficiency. There is inefficiency somewhere. There are activities going on. There are programs going on. Conferences going on. And nothing is wrong with those things in themselves. Except that the heart of God's intent is seldom being communicated. And that calls for a very serious review of our approach to kingdom advance. It is God's desire, John chapter... Um, 15 now 
and verse 8 that we bear fruit and that our fruit abides meaning your fruit can be lost are we together we have lost several foundational precepts as simple as how to know who is saved and who is not is a serious problem for believers that's a sign that something is wrong with the church that we have lost that ability to be able to see the clarity on who is lost and who is saved the average believer does not know what to do with a new convert is that true the moment you bring a new convert to a believer and say please um, I'm trusting you with the destiny of this brother or this sister you will be shocked to find out that that person may even be a pastor in church that that person may even be a deacon that person may be a worker a leader haven't been around the things of God for many years sitting down under spiritual leaders but not knowing what to do say well I don't know what to do with this person what is step B after giving your life to Christ how do ordinary believers become spiritual men do we know well enough to be committed to someone that you can give someone who just got born again and they trust him and say look in three weeks we should be able to see certain things happen in this life listen let me tell you the truth if we do not re-examine this I truly believe that a few years from now the lapse of our being out of touch with these spiritual realities will become clear with all humility and with all love for the body of Christ look at the caliber of we pastors and men of God that are handling the pulpit we are largely ignorant people ignorant of the precepts of God ignorance of the methodology of God we just went through a denominations foundation school or a denomination school of ministry or a denominations requirement for ordination and all of a sudden oil is poured upon you and you are granted access to the souls of hundreds thousands and millions of people who submit their minds and their spirit to the mentorship of a confused person who only had the privilege to hold a mic and we keep teaching them and they swallow everything we teach hook line and sinker the life of the church today is a testament of our inefficiency as men of God the average believer does not have an understanding of kingdom advance at all we don't know we don't care we are not even interested what do you do do you know that's why look at the body of Christ the gap between extremely anointed people and those who are squallowing around the ground is too wide what happened are you getting what I'm saying in a whole territory you may find just two or three people at the upper levels spiritually and then that's all right but the next sets of people will be so far apart i have seen churches where in a whole church only maybe two or three of the spiritual leaders are truly anointed or on fire out of a church of maybe 30 pastors 27 of them when they come and hold the mic then you see on the board pastor this apostle this and you say my god who called this guy to ministry what is he saying opinions philosophies cunningly devised fables are we together now and look at the quality of men and women who are being produced it's a disaster that requires a quick rescue many believers do not know god many believers do not know the holy spirit many believers do not know the voice of the holy spirit many believers do not know scripture many believers do not even understand the system of god many believers go to church i agree many believers take communion i agree many believers join in general church prayer i agree 
but very few believers have risen in spiritual orientation i'm not talking of men of god i'm talking of people who are healthy because of an atmosphere that is healthy the the kind of threat that the gate of hell is supposed to receive from the church has reduced grossly grossly we see the ease with which darkness looms around territories as though there are no believers there but the bible says you are the light of the world it didn't say you are the noisemakers it didn't say you are the discussers you are the light you bring illumination you are a city that is set on a hill I think it's Philippians chapter 2 when you read from verse 13 to 16 it starts by saying do everything without complaining or arguing I'm sure I'm right and then it says that he will be blameless um, okay for God it that he may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation what is your mandate among whom ye shine as lights in the world next verse it says holding forth 16 holding forth the word of life holding forth the word of life not cunningly devised fables not the discussions of men are we together we have lost too many things in the body of christ we have lost power we have lost a voice no we, we have to we have been downgraded to a realm of scientology and carnality there must be a drastic upgrade otherwise something will be wrong we will not know the difference between spiritism and christianity or scientology and logic or some kinds of philosophical things are we blessed preserve us of the ordinances of God in a territory mandated to make sure every generation tastes the reality of the life of God for in your presence there is life everlasting I will reverence you I will reverence you. I will reverence you, Lord. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. When John was caught up in the Isle of Patmos, John began to explain to us what he saw. And among many other things, John said he had a voice. And when he turned to see that voice, he saw seven lampstands. Listen carefully. And then John said, in the midst of the lampstand, there was one like the son of man and he began to describe various attributes of him and then it was god himself who began to give john that interpretation he says that those lampstands represent the church the ecclesia god's body the lampstands that christ is found in the midst of them that light that is also a city set on a hill that should never never be confused he says it is the church brothers and sisters let me tell you the truth christianity is not in danger listen carefully church is not in danger but the ordinances of the spirit that make men mighty is in danger are you hearing what i'm saying the ordinances the secrets of god that is a portion to transform men from ordinary people to make men of power and relevance is in danger we scarcely understand the secrets of God the pathway that any believer can follow and become a man of grace a man of power 
and relevance. I want to share with you very briefly because I want us to pray. Six ways that the precepts of God can and should be preserved in a territory. fire in the spirit the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing fire like a volcano that's what I'm seeing in the spirit a volcano in the spirit Shabaka to she goes kind of like a volcano please can another drummer sit down please let this gentleman go for somebody this man is to Still seeing this fire inside, outside. I'm seeing it. It's like a volcano. When when you see God doing these kinds of things, it's, it's not show. It's not show. He's bringing witness. He's bringing witness to the spirit of man, because the word of God must have an agency for performance. He's he's working on people. I'm seeing like a volcano rising and exploding. Then the fire is dropping on people. This is what I see in the spirit. This is what I see in the spirit. Shabarakata sikata. Shabregade balakota varianda kosi brada. It's making us witnesses. Testaments. Listen, let me tell the truth. There are precepts of the spirit that cannot be lost. We must trust God. We must become true spiritual custodians of these things. Otherwise, a generation is in danger. The death of a man of God should not end the move of God. There are many men of God, we talk about them. They left with the secrets because there were no men to receive. They left with the secrets. Elisha died. Till today, there are dimensions that would have been seen. Gehazi was not positioned to receive. God, God sees my heart. How that I desire that we become spiritual. 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 Not just supernatural. Spiritual. You must, you must understand the realm of the spirit. And sustain capacity to interact with that realm. Otherwise you will not do much. I promise you. That you must, you must learn how to walk with God such that you become an envoy of his presence it's not just a call it's not just a unique call to a man it's not just a unique call to a man it is the product of consistently following a pathway there is a pathway that produces that effect it's not an exclusive preserve of particular men there is a path you can follow that leaves the trace of god's presence it's like a perfume so every time you find expression, there is no man born of a woman that comes under the influence of that presence that will not be affected. That's the realm where doubt dies. That's the realm where all kinds of suspicion go away. You, you are not trying to show your anointed. Your presence always introduces a reality. You are showing men that you are standing in an interface between two realms. And for as long as you are there, you open them up to experiences that their current faith level cannot afford them. This is not just talk, talk, talk. All this empty talk, we keep mocking ourselves. The Bible says, for I did not come to you with the excellency of speech. It is not just about oratory. No. This is not grammar. This is the reality. The Bible, Paul calls it the mystery of godliness. That God can be embodied, domiciled 
in an individual who was born of flesh and blood but produced an effect that is strangely supernatural no man is born with the anointing no man is born with the anointing no man is born with spiritual power men follow pathways is an ancient path that has been lost there's too much talk too much grammar too much preaching too much listening to every man of God's message and picking out what will make you stand out on stage it, let me tell you the truth if we do not trust God to touch reality we will keep wasting our time educating ourselves do you know what what the average young preacher does hold on what the average young man not just your young, young believer who loves God does is he finds the tapes of five six seven eight men of God around the world and just puts them together and listens to them and there's nothing wrong with that but the purpose of listening to it is to try to synergize enough revelation to give him capacity to speak well so that he will not be ashamed that's a joke if that's what you think brings power and opens the heavens over a man is a is a big a big joke a big joke the realm of the spirit is not an educational classroom it's a place where men are made genuinely there there are there are there are capacities apportioned for people on grounds of working with the holy spirit only the holy spirit gives that ranking nobody you can pretend you have it many people pretend they have it but when the door settles down you hear the testimonies Kai, we have lost something serious we must trust God to be trusted with grace to preserve the ordinances of God otherwise some of the young believers coming up the only thing we can give them as a heritage is born again and then they get born again and they don't know what to do and it is this same confused us that have been ordained week in week out Everybody is a general overseer. Everybody is a president. Everybody is an apostle. Everybody is a prophet. Everybody is a pastor. Hilarious ordinations happening left, right, and center. And everybody is just holding the mic, and we are as confused as those who are trying to teach. I say this out of love for the body, but we must return. We are losing something. We are losing something very powerful. We are losing something. The ordinances. The precepts of the spirit there is a spiritual formula that men are subject to we are losing it in the name of ministry in the name of globalization in the name of making sure we expand no sir the average believer does not even know whether his prayer is answered or not the average believer does. the only thing we have done is that every time we pray in tongues for a long time and dissipate spiritual energy there is a consolation based on that energy so it is based on that pain we go through that we believe it is answered what, what sort of an, an education is that the average believer studies the bible to ease himself or herself from the guilt the personal guilt that comes from messages every sunday that you must be spiritual it is not a personal appetite it's not a search if if that guilt were taken away from us we would throw the bible in a heartbeat that's why we love using any other thing job or whatever it's only because we are free and everybody knows we are free so we can't say we are not serious so when there is a legitimate crown then we excuse it how the precepts of God are preserved in a territory Our sensitivity largely very dull largely very dull any and everything happens around us and there is no acumen no perception we see and hear things we do not have strength and capacity to interpret so we become victims of anything and anybody who presses a little more than usual we we accept it that that person is being called into the ministry Number one, the 
first way, listen carefully, that the purposes of God are both established and preserved in a territory. Like our territory, Zaria here for instance, is prayer. Write it down, prayer. The first way the purposes of God are established upon a territory and also preserved is prayer. Warfare and intercession, write it down. A lost act in the body of Christ. Genuine warfare and intercession. Let me tell you something. If we ever have a generation that laughs at warfare and intercession, that's the generation that will not live to hand over to another. I promise you. I promise you. Our, our spiritual ignorance is tilting us gradually to downplay the role of spiritual warfare and intercession over setting the atmospheres and the climates of territories to allow that territory host God. Brothers and sisters, it takes prayer. It takes genuine warfare and intercession for the heavens to be opened over a territory enough for the purposes of God to be established. Warfare. Ezekiel chapter 22. It's a long reading, 23 to 31. But the verse of emphasis is verse 30. Ezekiel 22. Please help us, media. Ezekiel chapter 22. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Long reading, quickly, please. Just go to verse 30. Because at the, at the way we are going, we are going to waste too much time. And I sought for a man among them. Now, this was God angry with a territory. That's why what I wanted us to read, but because of time, we'll just look at 30. God was angry with a territory and was about to pour his indignation and his judgment. And God said, that mercy dimension of me was still there. But I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land. For what? For the land, not for the church. I'm talking about taking over territories, preserving the precepts of God over a territory. A man that will stand for the land. So there are men that can stand for the land, not just their churches. That because of their presence and the business they do with God, certain things can happen to territories. They don't even know why it came and how it came. But a man stood for a land. That I should not destroy it, but I found. Did he say I did not find human beings? They were human beings. Many. But I found none. That man built in capacity and understanding. The ministry of prayer. Let me tell you this. Believe me. Hear me, church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everywhere. Here in any nation. But more specifically in Zaria. If we stop praying in Zaria. Because of some kind of spiritual laziness. You will be shocked. The way darkness will prevail over the city. Are we together? The ministry of prayer is one of the foundational tenets that must be preserved in every generation. I don't care whether the believer is going to be a man of God or a civil servant or a politician. The ministry of prayer must be indoctrinated in every believer. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Not just need driven prayers alone. But we must graduate from realms of just praying, give me tea, give me bread, to taking over lands. That because of your presence in the territory, you subdue the controlling powers, the powers that mold the mindsets of people, the powers that are responsible for prevalent tragedies over a nation. That you come into a city and find accidents anyhow. All kinds of things anyhow and you realize that you have been made a king and a priest over that territory and part of the ministry of your priesthood is advocacy 
that you go before God and you stand face to face with the controlling powers. That's what men did in the Bible. Abraham stood in for Sodom and Gomorrah. Are we together? Preserved the family of Lot. The wife chose the way she wanted. Joseph stood in, preserved certain things. Daniel stood in, preserved. Are you not men who preserve the purposes of God? Your generation. The ministry of warfare and prayer. The ministry of warfare. Ephesians chapter 6. When we read from verse 10 to 19, the Bible tells us. Listen carefully. The Bible tells us that um, we should be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then it says we should put the full armor of God. Are we together? Then it says how that we, we do not war against principalities and powers, but against um, rulers and flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and all of that. It begins to tell us that in every territory, these demonic structures exist. Hold on. Let me preach to educated people. You know, sometimes because we have gone to school, because we are rich, small money, small job, we, and sometimes innocently and truthfully, I hear preachers downplay the presence of controlling powers over cities simply because at the present they are doing well. Let me tell you something. Satan is many things. A fool is not one of them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Satan is defeated. Satan is old. Satan is several things. But a fool is not one of them. He has the advantage of age. Time. He has studied mankind. Different species of people have lived upon this earth. He has had an advantage of one-to-one -one experience. Satan has existed before several dispensations. Before Adam's dispensation. That brought us into the sea. Every territory has controlling powers every territory has controlling powers if you see the purposes of God prevailing in that territory brothers and sisters it's not because the controlling powers are not there an agency in the spirit a system has been lifted in the heaven that has clamped down the activities of darkness enough to allow the purposes of God find expression that's why I said if we stop praying Or if we concentrate on childish, immature prayer, Lord, give me tea. Tomorrow again, oh God, I forgot to ask for bread yesterday. There is a place where you ask for your needs. But notice how Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, we reverence you. After reverencing him, the next thing is your agenda. Your kingdom come, your kingdom come, your kingdom come upon a land, upon a territory. Listen. The concept of prayer chains, the concept of prayer groups, the concept of prayer cells in territories must never end. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yes. Now, the, the, the challenge with many people is that the moment people start praying, carnality comes in and they are looking who is the leader among these three people. What is the name of this ministry of four of us? I don't know who taught us that prayer groups, prayer cells, prayer chains, there should be some structure of leadership. But, you know, we have this mentality and, and especially some of us who are coming up are mentoring this wrong thing from some of us men of God. The moment people start praying, everybody is obsessed about who is the leader, who has the protocol to follow him. If, if we do like that, then the devil is going to destroy us. In every city and territory in Zaria there should be prayer portals that's how the kingdom works I'm a good student of revivals that's how it should work in Samaru there should be units of men and women praying high in Dogo there should be people there has to be representations of the kingdom sending an incense of prayer on a daily basis that's why I thank God for all the groups scattered around. And notice that's what Satan hates. The moment there are people praying, some kinds of agitation must arise from anywhere. Preservers of the ordinances of God. Gone are the days where churches start as prayer groups. 
now church is cut as intentional organized platforms for the enjoyment of the man of God are we together that before a man of God starts ministry he has sewn his clothes for one year are we together the offering basket has been made tight envelope is in is, is intact what is it we, we better be careful this joke that we keep joking with ourselves every correct ministry stands and says it doesn't it? let me tell you most men of God that are being used mightily by God today ask them their intention was never ministry they were men who made themselves available when God called them they went back and cried and said God can you use somebody else God will say you are the person you can choose to say no but I'm not using any other person you are the one I will use but now you see the appetite with which we rush into this thing and the devil doesn't he, he doesn't stop us because there's whether we are in it or outside it, it makes no difference to him we are still equally ignorant prayer that's how this ministry started prayer every day fire on the altar and I'm not talking of the kind of prayer that is for one hour and you talk for 60 minutes and you say let's let's thank God that's Bible study prayer should be an intense time of engaging in the spirit only to be interrupted shortly to establish a few things strengthen the understandings of the people the fire continues this is the kind of prayer that can host heaven in eternity let me be honest with you many territories have a lot of repentance to do many families have a lot of repentance to do the prayer lives of many people are under attack when the devil finds out that there's no hope of you backsliding in prayer he tells your prayer to become a selfish one so you are praying for hours but you are making minimal minimal spiritual progress i insist prayer chains prayer groups there are many of you here that the burden is in your hand it's not carnality and it is not ministry either when you let me teach you something every time you get to a new land before you get accommodation find somewhere where you can pray scan around the back of one tree shout and hear whether it disturbs anybody if that's what dedicate it as an altar to start with don't go around and say where can i get a hotel and all this rubbish no find a place to pray somebody will join you another person will join you the devil is in trouble once there are up to two people or three that can agree to be praying apostle but what is the name of the ministry it's not it doesn't have a name the ministry is traveling in the spirit until the purposes of god are portioned for that territory so it doesn't matter where you are the assignment is the same if you leave zaria for a three-week break and you are in kogi for that three week every demon and devil in Koki state will feel the fire when you return it doesn't matter someone else who is returning there so there's fire everywhere say everywhere but now you find out that some places are as cold as ice whereas some other places are on fire do you know whenever you travel for a ministry to a, to a ministry the purpose is not just to go there to watch a superstar the purpose is to carry like a coal you go and fetch some of it are we together that's why when i see people come from other places i like laying my hands on them it's not just for showmanship so you carry something the goal is to take it back to your territory the same way we do in the physical when they want to teach an organization certain things and they can't sponsor all of them what do they do they pick one man is that true or a few people send them abroad for the training when they return back they teach the people not shine with it not shine with it this is where we are missing it train the people one of the biggest killers in ministry is tied to and that sense of control over men if we don't repent out of it you know i look at people and there is such an obsession to be the leader okay this group is the name is is, is, is um, salvation power intercessory group and i'm the one i'm the, the, the i'm the chief uh, uh, coordinator of it that means i'm the one who prays more and all these ones are my children 
you start praying in two months everybody that comes here is your child including people like our mother here that came to all this this poor self-esteem that we have transferred into our prayer lives and ministries this title and an obsession for platforms is what is killing the move of god in many territories do you know there are people as students years ago there are people who had different prayer groups when when all of them were finishing they just left they've gone on other places doing great things but most of us you pray for two days and then the next thing you carry a piece of paper who is really the secretary among these five people we need to define it because the other day i didn't tell anybody to leave prayer and this other lady suddenly when did she join this thing before and you see we, we start politicizing it are you not from madam or me too i'm from Adam. that one came i don't say from lagos he said we don't want to bring all these kind of things and we kill the move of god with very frivolous childish things another thing that kills prayer is love no, not love relationship hello I keep saying it there are people till today they have no business loving anybody please hear what I'm saying all this thing of coming to the house of God for one month and you're already eyeing every sister every brother you are in love no sir this is not how we train people we train people to look for God first press into God have a testament a, a track record then you can love but now everybody is, is just you come in two days you are praying people are closing their eyes praying and what you are doing is you are looking out for for who it is to marry i'm not saying god cannot use those platforms in fact god should use them are we together however your heart if the reason why you are in several prayer groups is to find a wife or find a husband you need to re-engineer and renew your mind and repent and ask for forgiveness and concentrate on the major reason why you are there first most people who become mightily used by god never go there to marry they go there to seek god they pray with all their heart and soul. and one day while they are praying god will tell them you see this 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 lady it's even God that will tell them, my son, look, you have been serving me sincerely. This, this one that you are serving, you need a helper. I said, God, I can continue. God, it's me that I say you need a helper. But now, we are the ones bombarding the gate of heaven. A prayer request full of, oh God, won't I marry? And God, what have you done for me? You have not done anything. Nobody has been saved as a result. It's a scam to come to the house of God. You are not contributing anything. And the next thing you want to take, and and usually it's god's best we want to take oh come on please are we blessed let me be honest with you church of the lord jesus christ let's return to the place of seeking god sincerely and passionately or coming to the house of god and everybody is checking what did this one this prayer group ah i like this suit that this one is wearing i know father your kingdom come in this territory there is darkness lord we just noticed that 11 people died in nine months that means there is a spirit passing through that territory unhindered and all of a sudden one faithful day that spirit will hear a sound from the earth Shakata kata kata. Lekota kata priakata. as it's moving to high in dogo someone is taking it from there let me tell you how you drive spirits you make the heavens unconducive don't laugh at what I'm telling you. I'm teaching you how this thing works. Because they will always live where there is fire and settle down. And wait for a backsliding territory and then return back. This is how many of those we admire today, that's how they were raised. They were never, and Jimmy is here asking, those of you who were there when Koinonia, when he and I started, when you got born again in two weeks it will be as if you have spent one year in christ because there was fire everywhere there still is but because we're a lot more organized now it is very difficult when people got there were people who would get born again filled with the holy spirit from day two they start prophesying and even with the prophesying they are not going anywhere because they are still demons to get out of there as they finish prophesying they want humble themselves and sit down and learn but now someone gets born again after one month because of the gift of the spirit 
He prophesies, she prophesies the next thing. They start speaking to people. They speak mistakes into the lives of people because they are seen correctly, but the dynamics of interpreting spiritual things is not there. And before you will now learn and grow, you have misled several people. Gift is not maturity. You need to stay with God. No matter how you rush, you must stay. That fire, that fire is the maker of men. Anybody that dodges fire, don't trust him. Don't trust him. You must be refined as of gold. Our desires and appetites must be put genuinely to seek God. Say amen. amen. Prayer. I'm encouraging you. I'm encouraging the church in Zaria. I'm encouraging the church everywhere. There must be prayer units. Most ministries do it. But many ministries, what, what they do is not really prayer unit. It's just maybe home sales, which is wonderful. I, I, I don't have a problem with it. Do you know why we not do it as Koinonia? Because you are an extension of the ministry. The goal is not Joshua Selman in every home. The goal is the kingdom, the power, the glory of God. Your house can become an altar. Your small area can become an altar. Two of you, three of you can begin to pray. It doesn't matter that God started with you. It doesn't need to have a name. The name is prayer. Seven to nine. Five to six in the morning. Nine to ten. Every day or two days in a week or three days in a week. You do this and see what begins to happen. Let me tell you what begins to happen. The moment you pray, there will first be silence. One month, two months, you will start seeing physical agitations. The demons that are resident in men will start reacting. Something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Your own loved ones will start fighting you for reasons you cannot explain. And say, look, um, you are becoming proud. And you say, no, no, sir, I'm not becoming. You are becoming proud. The moment they say that, remember spiritual intelligence, you know it's not the individual. You, you respect the body, but go back in the spirit and say, Satan, I'm still there. I know it's you. Jesus looked at Peter and said, Satan, get thee behind you. And you go and continue and then one day let me tell you how god will announce that he has come to that territory a spectacular move of god will happen one day you will see people in a family and they are just sitting down watching football and the power of god breaks out in that house breaks out in the house where they hate the holy spirit guess who the first to be filled with the holy ghost will be the father himself and you are wondering my father my father Yes, your father. This controversial person who is so scientific. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's the one God. Your prayer. The Holy Spirit has been eyeing him. And on that day. We have missed it. There are many territories that are cold. So the only way people can get some fire. Is when they rush and converge in particular places. The place of convergence is important. But the place of convergence should not be a remedy for lack of fire where you are. It should be a place to come and receive a greater fanning. Can you make a commitment in one minute? That you will become an extension of the fire of God in your territory. Pray. Pray in one minute. Cast away lukewarmness. Some of us, our lives are under attack. We are seeing it, but we do not care. The grace for prayer is zero. Every and anybody is distracting your prayer life. I'm busy, I'm busy. A deception by the pit of hell. Lord, in the staff quarters, Find a space through me. Lord, in prison, we represent an extension of that altar of prayer. Hallelujah.
Listen. Let your prayer be focused on impact, not titles. Impact, not titles. If you are here roaming around looking for people to start going to your small church, lock it down and go and start praying. Alone, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't invite anybody. Let them come and meet you praying. Shakata, kata, kata. Lekata, kata. And you are praying and God is watching you. My beloved son. No carpet. No canopy. No mic. No suit. No nothing. But a genuine desire to seek him. And God is saying, I, I am watching. Listen. All this, all this running around. Am I a prophet or am I a apostle? It's nonsense. It is the place of prayer and work. There is nobody that starts ministry and starts working with God knowing who he is. Even if God tells you it will not look like that. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All this I am apostle. This just wait and see it will happen. You are joking. Nothing will happen. It is in the place of prayer. As that fire refines you, it starts drawing you to become something. And everybody starts saying this is the training of a prophet. Even you, you may mistake yourself for an evangelist because the only thing you did was crusade. But then it's eventually, as it's building you, you know that no, this training is not an evangelist training. Ah, why is this unusual? Ah, there are people who think they are called it, they are, some of you here seated, you are born prophets with the office of a prophet, but you have not seen one vision. Because it's not about the vision. Keep praying. Just continue. Just continue. You will argue with anybody and say, No, sir, I'm not a prophet. Me, I, I know I'm a pastor because I'm a good teacher. You will find out that teaching is not even part of it. Just keep praying. The refiner's fire comes through that prayer. When your heart is being purged, are we together now? Flesh is being taken away. One day, you will begin to pray. And all of a sudden, you will find out that you will prophesy like Saul from morning till night and step into a strange dimension. Many people who are calling themselves many offices take it from me, they are wrong. They don't know. It is only the place of the dealing of the spirit that makes you, you say you are a pastor, who told you? Just because someone prophesied, he saw in part and he said so, he may be right, but he may not be it. No, don't say just because you saw a ring, you saw a hand. You say, I'm a prophet, I'm a prophetess, I'm an apostle. No, sir, don't flatter yourself. Let the place of prayer incubate you. When you come out fully, the name that you are will be shown. Not just by titles, results, results. Results will show who you are. If you're a prophet, don't tell us. Let the results show it. Show us the eye of the spirit you received in the place of prayer. Show us the acumen, the ability to perceive realities. That's what makes a prophet. Show us the ability to bring things down from the realm of the spirit. Don't come and talk jargons and waste our time. Show us the performance that comes based on the word of God. Show us the throne in heaven that backs that office. Don't say I'm an apostle. Show us the throne that backs you. Show us the keys of the territory that was given to you. We go around bragging, calling ourselves names, flattering ourselves and deceiving people and being deceived ourselves. Pray in one minute, Lord, a restoration of the grace for warfare and intercession. Praying over a land. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Restore me back, oh God, to the ordinances of the fathers. Restore me back. Restore me back. Restore me back. Restore me back. The ordinances. That help men to walk with God. Hallelujah. 
praise the Lord. I once saw a man of God that I knew years ago. When I shook that man, as soon as I shook him, tears filled my eyes. I was almost asking him, where did your fire go to? What happened to you? What made you cold like this? Who deceived you? What did you start listening to? Where did you go? Which association did you join? Restore my fire. Lift your voice and pray. Cry it from your spirit. Restore my fire. Shakata gata. Leketo satos kabriata. Restore my fire. Restore it, O God. The destiny of a territory is at stake. The destiny of a territory is at stake. This is not the issue of being a man of God. This is not the issue of being in ministry. Preserve us of the ordinances of the Spirit. Daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, without fail.
There are ladies that don't pray. Don't pray. Fashion is, is eating us up. I believe in fashion, look good, but it's complete nonsense if you don't pray. Can we pray in the spirit just for one minute? Just, just to allow the Holy Spirit to bring this. There are gentlemen that don't pray. We are over conscious of ourselves. No, sir. Teach your children to pray. Teach your children to pray. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Prayer. Preserve prayer in every territory. Preserve it in your house. Preserve it in your life. Preserve it everywhere. Don't let it go. No matter who laughs at you, no matter how Western, those of you listening from other nations of the world, restore prayers back to your homes. Restore prayer back to your churches. Whether you are in America, whether you are in London, it doesn't matter where. Restore prayer back. Prayer has equal value everywhere. Whether you are rich or poor, your personal comfort has nothing to do with your prayer life. Number two. How are the ordinances of God advanced and preserved? A regular convergence of believers within, within that territory. The second way that the ordinances of God are not only transferred but preserved is that there must be a regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained, equipped, empowered. There is no territory that can preserve our spiritual heritage when there is no platform for a regular convergence of believers. Be it a regular church service, be it a midweek service, be it different interdenominational programs, it doesn't matter. There has to be a regular convergence. There must be a platform where the believers within that territory keep in touch they are trained they are equipped they are empowered then they also receive the blueprint of god's current emphasis is one of the highest advantage of coming together when believers come together the whole territory can hear what god is doing now don't assume that because god moved in a particular way yesterday that's what he's still doing today When a territory dissociates itself from Psalms 133, a convergence for the purpose of being equipped, it is for this reason that God anointed some. He gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping of those people within that territory. So what, what happens here every week is the will of God. A convergence of men and women. Are you seeing why when people begin to say it's not the issue of crowd, there, there is a joke. Are the people cheers? The more the people within a territory that can converge to hear the precepts of God, provided the dispensers of that truth are in touch with God is an advantage in the multitude of people is a king's honor the king there is not the man of God the king there is the king of kings in the multitude of people within a territory don't have a territory of 5 million people and the largest church in that territory is 300 people and you say it doesn't matter what else matters why didn't Jesus die for 12 people and say 12 people receive my salvation? 
than any other person who is interested. No, he died for the whole world. Don't get into that mistake of resenting crowds. Just because there are people or there may be ministries that have crowds and maybe the men of God and the women of God may not be well positioned to supply them the kind of spiritual feeding does not mean that God is against crowd. When you reject it, it looks like you are being spiritual. But that's been carnal. Anybody that knows God must love people. Acts chapter 2 from verse 42 to 47 they continued Acts 2 and they continued look at me who are the day the community of believers within that territory they continued steadfastly consistently unbendingly in the rain in the sunshine convenient or not convenient the sad reality is that most people in the body of Christ have been indoctrinated that only when things become convenient for you there are people who come to church and now I believe in excellence but just a little hit somewhere they said I'm too I mean I'm I'm, I'm too I'm too ah, 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 steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers we are reading down to 47 and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things in common and they sold their possession and their goods and parted them etc etc 46 and they continuing daily not even weekly the church of old they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart verse 47 praising God and having favor with all the people and what did God do who is the person who brings a crowd a man of God please get away from all that mistake of thinking men of God are using oratory you can invite animals by gimmicks not men men are not stupid a crowd of people cannot be a crowd of idiots there are people who are sensible and went to school when you see crowds God brought them don't get into that thing of saying people are just gathering just for entertainment no sir no sir there may be one of two exceptions but you don't generalize there are places God is doing mighty things this place is one of them the Bible says and the Lord added to the church how many daily such as should be saved so the multitudes of people that come are people sent by God to find salvation there must be a regular convergence when Satan wants to frustrate the purposes of God in a territory he starts bringing people and policies that try to frustrate the gathering of the brethren are you seeing that now that's why things like a crisis is very bad because among other things it puts fear in people and causes men to not be able to come together and to learn thank God for platforms technology has afforded greater opportunities today most ministries and most groups and platforms have social media presence for all those who are part of what God is doing in that ministry to connect and follow there are all kinds of opportunities for growth number three how is the kingdom advanced in a territory how are the ordinances of God preserved in a territory ready an open display of real miracles signs and wonders beyond the church walls let me tell you how God is institutionalized in a territory an open display not a private quiet secret doubtful manifestation of his power an open display of real genuine miracles signs 
wonders that are beyond the church wall out of all the miracles jesus performed please write it and look up out of all the miracles jesus performed less than one percent of them was done in the church is that true he was strolling one day and then he saw a dead body they were going out a woman was crying had lost her son had lost her husband and he said what's going on here and he said this woman is about to leave he stopped them there and then and brought the son back to life do you know that when a miracle happens and it is not known it doesn't bring God glory the glory God receives is in the announcing of what he has done I know most times people think it's an announcing of a powerful man of God our mother came here and shared testimony our brother here came and shared testimony of someone who has come back to life do you know what that does to you it strengthens your faith and then when the miracle happens in your presence it is beyond doubt that's why listen listen if you're a man of God here you must trust God for grace for instant performance of the word instant performance it is wonderful to go and come back two weeks with results but there is nothing more convincing than the optical eyes of a doubter watching God in action you saw it before during and after when Jesus finished declaring his his um, call in Luke chapter 4 he told the guy with the withered hand he said for starters to prove to you the hand of God is upon me Mr. Man stretch your hand when he stretched his hand that was beyond doubt the highest that can happen to you is you'll be criticized and hated but I assure you God will be glorified an open display why do we need an open display of miracles within territories it creates convictions not just in the heart of church members in the heart of the community many communities do not believe in God because they have not seen him coming in an open display the day God anoints you and you stand and speak over a territory and say God reveal to me that in in five months they are going to tar this road and people laugh at you and say stupid pastor if you want cheap publicity go on air and all of a sudden a rich man comes within that territory and tars that road in five months you don't need to tell them God has done it the next time they see you that convicting power the day you now speak and say I saw death in this community they will not laugh at you again they do not take our word serious do you know why bloggers and journalists write everything about men of God because there has not been an open display of the efficacy of the power and the grace of God something that defies principalities and signs and wonders most of this open display is largely done in the south that's why there are hardly our fathers of faith there the, the kind of crowd that comes for their meetings the miracles that happen you will see people sitting on the street selling akara selling pap and watching people rise up from wheelchairs now let me tell you it does not matter how hardened you are if you see a real miracle you must go back and think about it you can choose to argue but the truth still remains the truth what has happened in your family to shut the mouth of those who are doubting those who have laughed at you and said koinonia every time you must trust god for an open display everybody say an open display that one day you step into the parlor and all of a sudden someone that is to go for surgery maybe your loved ones just because you stepped in there while they are busy criticizing a man of god on tv you look and say daddy the lord just said i should tell you that this cancer is gone and he loves their young boys i was with you i was i remember serving god in boys brigade when i was growing up while they are talking all that drama there is instant miracle and he touches his stomach he will first quietly go to the room and lock the door and say no no what is happening and within a short time the lord is glorified let me tell you what they'll start calling you uh where is prophetess pastor 
evangelists were about to pray is God saying anything that's a sign that God is working God is working something powerful in this time God is raising mighty men in our days he won't stop he won't stop till his church looks like him he won't stop no he won't stop till my life looks like him Acts chapter 19 please quickly Acts chapter 19 brothers and sisters we need a restoration of the anointing in the body of Christ this anointing thing is not for showmanship the anointing is a silencer of doubters Charles and Francis Hunter of blessed memory would always say that one miracle is worth a thousand words our noise is too much we need a performance of strange and extreme dimensions of the operation of the spirit that stretches people's own belief until they no longer have a chance to disbelieve God. Acts chapter 19, verse 11. 11. And God wrought what kind of miracles? There are ordinary miracles. They are supernatural in themselves. But they are special miracles. By the hands of Joshua Selman. Verse 12. So that from his body. This is a very personal scripture for me. So that from his body we are brought to the sick handkerchiefs and aprons today we just use it out of showmanship a man of god just says what did you say is wrong with you sir darkness is all over our house so bring this handkerchief i hold it we spit on it we rub it on our face people carry it back home like a charm one year after that handkerchief arrived home nothing happened it's a sign that there's no power period obed edom and the ark of God was taken to his house in 90 days. How many days? 90 solid days. It's true that I know that some miracles can take time. But something should start working after some time. Are we together? If I lay hands on you to be delivered. And after two weeks you come back one month. Nothing has happened. That means something is wrong. Not with you, with me. I should go back for a retreat. And say lord these hands otherwise a day will come the hands will just look like tissue paper as it's coming on your head you believe that nothing is happening keep these hands anointed oh god keep these hands anointed keep these hands anointed that's a good prayer to pray for yourself keep these hands anointed may i never stand upon the stage and waste the time of god's people may i never lay hands on someone or shake someone and touch someone and his life doesn't change this is not about showmanship when your hands are empty you are not in ministry let me tell you you are just you are just a no Abba. believe what i'm saying keep these hands preserve it preserve your grace preserve the mystery of the oil you have put upon his hands he said god brought mighty miracles give it to us again please by the hands of paul what is happening through your hands nothing 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 you don't have to be in church what is happening through your hands what happens to my destiny if i shake you you claim that god lives in you brothers and sisters what has happened to your hands nothing oh let me agree with you and we hold people while we are praying their eyes are opening we are the only ones who close our eyes because they don't believe in us they know that that prayer is just nonsense in jesus name amen they say thank you sir and they go back and say sorry can i see this man of god because that's the real person they know who solve their problems i want you to look at your hands and pray over it in one minute and say lord put something upon this hand put an anointing upon this hand that can represent your purposes it's not a carnal prayer i want you to sincerely pray Shake it like a source of a cup here. Put an anointing upon my hands, so God. There are too many sick people in my environment. Look at the brother that shared his testimony. He used his hand to hold the phone, and with a single call, a dead body came back from the realm of the spirit to the physical. Place an anointing on my hand. Place an anointing on my hand. 
Alleluia. He said, and the disease departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. 13. And certain of the vagabond Jews, copycats, exorcists, they took it upon themselves, upon them which had an evil spirit. You know, the name of the Lord saying, we adjure you. They thought it's just by, by big manism or wearing nice clothes. And one day, they saw someone who was heavily under the influence of demon spirits. Are we together now? We are reading to verse 20. And then 14 says, And there were seven sons of one skiver, a Jew and a chief of the priest, which did so. 15. And the evil spirit answered them. That's the side effect of lack of true power. It's not that the devil is trying to confess. This is not confession. This is a question. You, are, you, are, you, you stupid man of God. You think everybody is faking it. He called those who are real. Known by the realm of the spirit. Not by members. Jesus I know. Paul I know. Who are you? Hi. Who are you? When a demon spirit asks you who are you. Is that a nice thing? From the realm of the spirit. They are watching you every day. You have one suit. You went for a program. They kept water in front of your table. They did a, a good publicity. And they said, now it's time for the man of God, a man of strange anointing. And you hold the mic. And you are talking jargons and someone there is looking at you. And all of a sudden, the demon spirit with the person heavily possessed, just does his hand like that and you collapse on the stage and stand up and say sorry i don't know what happened my mind is ah no there's an army rising up there's an army rising up there's an army make progress verse 16 we are reading to 20 and the man in whom the evil spirit was did what leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded the consequence of approaching the power of darkness and the gates of hell when you have not proved that your fire is real there are many arrogant people in the body of Christ. Listen to me. Let me give you a very true secret. The power of God is unlimited. But its operation in the body of believers depends on many factors. Which includes their level of spiritual growth. You must have the courage to discern what is your level spiritually. There are many arrogant people. They would do anything. You are seeing some level of acute darkness that does not just require being anointed, but a comprehension of deep spiritual mysteries to set the people free. You just get up by yourself, carry a bottle of oil, and travel to one state that has 200 years of track record of acute witchcraft. I'm, I'm, I'm in Christ. And you go there. As soon as you get there, you start pouring oil around the compound. Nobody talks to you. You just find out that that night as you are sleeping the next day you get up and find yourself in the hospital what happens they say that's how the spirits work they don't talk to people the next thing you just whatever happens to you is their answer listen it's not everything you see that is that is all that there is when you see a man of god moving in the anointing it's only what you can see with your physical eyes you think is happening but there are interplay of spiritual laws a man can lay hands on someone's head and lay hands on his shoulder and you just think that it was just for the anointing to go anywhere when that man if he's spiritual if he explains to you the dynamics of what he has done are we together 
it's not all about just touching his head and his shoulder or whatever no that's why we must grow but as we grow we must trust god to know certain realities that require a higher level of anointing and insight there are certain levels of spiritual breakthrough that no matter how an individual is anointed one man cannot bring that level of breakthrough it will take the corporate body to bring it we do not know and one man will be trying to pull down something that is bigger than him so we must have that that's just a lesson for us to learn let's read down please quickly media don't take it away just leave it there so that we'll hurry up please help us and this was known to all the community are you seeing now something unpleasant now is known to all the community jews and greeks also dwelling at ephesus and fear came upon them and the name of the lord was magnified they saw the apostles healing the sick and i'm sure that they said what is there what is there miracles anybody can heal the sons of Sceva went to try it when the demons beat them it was an endorsement that this anointing is not common everywhere and the bible says that the people glorified god and then verse 18 says and many that believed did what as a result they came and confessed and showed their deeds 19 we are reading to 20. many of them which also use curious acts that means there were people who were smuggling magic books and using it it was working small by small but when certain men came into that city they got everyone packing out including magicians do you think if that book did not do something for them wouldn't they have thrown it since they saw something superior and powerful and the bible says they brought their books together and burned them before who a community imagine a popular herbalist in bromo or somewhere maybe zaria city bringing his magic book here and standing before everybody and say i was sent to go and kill one koinonia lady and just because i saw her cat walking i thought it was all about the before when i touched fire i got a reply and a response that i've never seen for 30 years of herbal practice this is what happened there and they counted the price of them and they found it 50,000 pieces of silver 20 popular scripture so mightily grew the word of god why because of a public display of miracles signs and wonders we need the supernatural we need to cry for the anointing we need a restoration of authentic spiritual power to back our churches and to back our lives man of god don't preach without power it's not about saying there's somebody here the power of god will throw you that's not what we are talking about that that's not power we are talking of results results undeniable results like some of you are seated here now you are coming for the first time you will not need to tell people you came for koinonia you will just go back and all of a sudden you find out that something has shifted you open your bible a true encounter is not known at the moment of the encounter is until the experience leaves and then the person just finds out that something has happened strangely let me give us one more there are six but i'll just stop at number four so that we pray number one is prayer number two is a regular convergence of believers within that territory number three an open display of miracle signs and wonders beyond the church walls number four intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers the fourth way the ordinances of god are preserved in a territory is through an intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers this is a serious one let me tell you this failure to mentor the younger believers that are rising will produce a generation that will forget god not just forget his ordinances but forget god i'm watching that and i'm throwing this as a challenge to the body of christ and even the church in zaria who 
are the apostolic and the prophetic voices mentoring our young ones in primary school now everybody has left them and we're focusing on ministry who are the people mentoring those in secondary school thank god for fcs thank god for um, um cem thank god for all of these people but there are some of you here you need to go back and begin to make sure that young people like shade's child here that by the time they are growing they are not only receiving education alone there must be an intentional mentorship of younger people most people is the mistake of the american church they left their children so you will see a mother who was an old baptist woman served god all her life but you will find out that her child is a tout and a hooligan somewhere who does not love god we must concentrate right now most people from the ages of 17 downwards all they are obsessed about is phones android devices ps4 i don't have a problem with it but their entire obsession oh what os are you using you hear that that's all they think about oh i'm using this ps4 there's this ah, they need fire oh they need they are not too young they need serious fire I'm not against that. It's the reality that comes with that age range. But we must be able to guide people. That's why I love it when you see our children come here for koinonia. I know that many of you say, ah, are they too young to understand? Ask occultists whether the children are too young to understand. You see a small child tie something like a napkin and do it like this and you turn upside down and fall down. That's the child of a herbalist. And they tell you, ah, that guy is one of the most senior person in this tribe. That small boy you are saying that is my son. Is your son in the physical? In the realm of the spirit is something else. An ancient spirit is seated on that small child. There is no child that is too small to receive spiritual things. They may be too small to articulate it, but their spirit is healthy enough to receive it. Second Timothy chapter two verse two. Second Timothy, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, he said, The same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others too. A superstar lifestyle is not God's plan. God's plan is not superstar Apostle Joshua Selman. God's plan is Apostle Joshua Selman committed by grace, certain precepts, and your assignment is to open up your heart and pour it to people so that they also will do so may god forbid that the day will come in zaria when the average young man does not know god say amen may god forbid that in zaria during a church service we'll have young people hanging around sagging their jeans and dancing around and toasting themselves instead of praying and crying to the god who can change any man's destiny may god forbid that is not your child that will refuse to know god listen 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 our children must love god and they must love god genuinely somebody is indoctrinating a generation to hate god i want you to beware there is a secret indoctrination of a generation ages 5 to 15 must be preserved those of you here that God is calling you into children ministry, receive an anointing for it. It's not all about giving children biscuits and sweets. Let them cram the memory verses. That's how we started. Children now don't know any memory verse again. You ask them, John 3.16, they are twisting their tongues and talking nonsense. Teach them. Don't say it's not useful. Let them know. When we were being raised, they taught godly songs now in most schools children cannot have a clean song that does not have explicit contents a little child is singing a song that even as an adult you look at him and say no this should not be there must be restoration of godliness cem may god anoint you more and revive you more please fcs may god anoint you and revive you more individual children ministry groups may god anoint you and revive you more because if you yourself are not revived what will you teach the children 
bad things bad things that's what our children learn now things that are more than their age and we say it does not matter it matters you have children in your house who are too young to watch certain things don't let them watch it don't let them watch it there are times you need to regulate i'm not i'm not trying to be harsh but there are times you need to regulate all this this a child of seven years watching television from morning till night switching from one music channel to the other hearing things and receiving them in the spirit and authorizing demon spirits to come and destroy them we must preserve godliness say amen, amen. you don't like what i'm saying I don't plan to stop at all we must say it again and again some of you god gave you instructions before you became popular to visit secondary schools and primary schools not with the name of any ministry and bless them but now that you have become apostle joshua selman you have become madam madam whatever businesswoman or whatever you have stopped go back repent and go back we have this mentality that when we are ministering to children it's a sign that we ourselves are children it's the society that makes it so in a bit to show that we are matured we leave the children and say look let's start talking to married men jesus said let the little children come to who come to me he says and do not forbid them for for such is the kingdom of heaven please return back to children ministry in the name of jesus christ when a child looks at you and does like this to you, don't smile at the child and rub the head. Carry the hand and spank it and say, no, you don't do like this. You greet people. Are we together? Most of us watch children do all kinds of things. A visitor just comes and the child comes and stands in front of him and slaps the visitor and is laughing and you are watching. Is that good? Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but a rod of correction, not discussion. You don't have to be hostile on children. A little spank with two fingers. One, two. And then tell them what they did that was wrong. Don't just leave them cry. This is what you did. Mommy does not like it. Daddy does not like it. For that reason. One, two. Jesus too does not like it. In include Jesus. Let them learn. And know that it's not just you alone. Preserve us of the ordinances of the kingdom there's this song that says our generation shall praise your name our generation shall praise your name my generation shall made a vow that for as long as I'm alive my generation must know God it's a covenant I've entered with myself there's no going back there's no discussion there's no hope of going back to go back is to die in life and in death it's a vow and a covenant I've made with myself and everything around my life it is to serve him forever and to introduce him to a generation God is waking us up. Stop playing games. Don't wait until the day you have a cathedral of 5,000 people. You can start now. Some of you, you are the firstborn. You are the only one who knows God in your house. Your, your fourth born can look at you and say, stupid girl, that's a joke. You need to cast out that demon out of your head and organize a standard Bible study using a koinonia message and tell them, sit down. You are 10 years older than him. is insulting you beat that devil out of that head and keep that child disciplined the day I give birth to a child who insults me that, that day I'm not going to concentrate on the child the spirit that could enter my roof through that child a child of maybe it's a child of 2-3 years 9-10 years no see Am I against being, am I, am I for being harsh? No. I'm a compassionate person. 
but please brothers marry though about to marry never over pamper children let them know discipline is part of love because most of our children will be born in millionaire families you must discipline them don't let spoiled children come up and become a nuisance to society pray they say no I, the church is hot please daddy can you give me the car to the jeep no son you are sitting down here if me your father the owner of the jeep the jeep is sitting down you must sit down and pray let's go back to our primary schools I'm serious I'm rounding up let's go back to our secondary schools gone are the days when teachers including Christian schools I don't know what is Christian about the school if they don't pray you have a Christian school and you openly said it's a Christian school and at the beginning of the class they don't pray what, what, is, what is the Christian about it the teacher himself cannot pray you never see a fasting program organized in the school nobody cares while they are praying the teacher who is a young guy somewhere who is not even born again wait and let koinonia start her schools oh yes oh yes let koinonia start her schools and you will see there's nothing like i'm busy who will supervise it it's a mandate don't do that i'm busy man of god and allow the devil kill your ministry sit down open your eyes and see what is happening this teacher's life is questionable he's destroying the life of the student call him to the office sir we love you and we don't mean to embarrass you but we notice that um it seems you have not been uh, a very good influence over our children could there be a problem would you need some counsel nobody should talk to me I'm doing all that nonsense i tell him as you finish this rubbish collect your last salary with the cashier go out of this place and never return any good pta they should clap for you as the director of that school and say you are preserving standards they laughed at Covenant University, laughed at Landmark University, laughed at Mountaintop University. But these universities today are bringing a standard that is almost getting to Cambridge and Harvard because they kept God. Don't throw God and think it will go well with you. We'll continue next week. Six precepts to keep and preserve God in a territory which one have you missed would it be prayer warfare and intercession could it be that you neglect the convergence of believers you come to the house of God today you come after one month or you come to the house of God today you come when all your areas are paid only to come and testify Have you positioned yourself to be used by God for an open display of miracles? Almost every family located here has the hand of Satan roaming somewhere. What is it still doing there when you come from that family? Apostle, can you come and visit us? Try first. Try first. Don't get used to all this. I, I, love, I love his testimony. Right? Pastor Lawrence, I love his testimony. It's not all about, oh, apostle prayed for me and I got a miracle. No, I came here. Apostle taught me. I carried that understanding back home. And I said, Daddy, I know that for 35 years, no door has opened in this family. But I came all the way from Zaria with an anointing. I'm using the opportunity of this strike. Can we pray and fast for just two days and let's watch what God does? And in two days, something that did not happen in 30 years happens. You have revealed Christ to that environment. And finally, we must mentor the younger believers. But the younger believers themselves must open up themselves to be mentored. Because there are many proud, proud people, proud people. You touch somebody, he just falls down. And you get up and this colleague mentality that people carry around colleague mentality some of you are in secondary school or maybe you have loved ones in secondary school thank God for what God is doing with them and all of a sudden this pompous arrogant attitude you see everybody and what is there 
you see vision i see vision you pray for the sick i pray for the sick it's why we never receive we keep making mistakes that are avoidable mistakes now let me tell you mentorship can destroy you if the mentor doesn't know what he's doing because some people actually submitted themselves truly to be mentored but they were mentored by people who didn't know what they were doing and they taught them rubbish they taught them pride they taught them a pompous life they taught them a theology of imbalance it matters who you listen to it matters who you open up your spirit to but that spirit must be open brothers and sisters our generation is at stake in the next 10 or 20 years many of the people we look at today will be gone is, is the truth do you believe that many of our fathers they are already wrapping up we insulted them we said ah they came and they taught people cover your head don't cover your head we insulted them they taught people die 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 we insulted them now the button is being passed to us let's hear what our children will say about us we insulted them we refused to see what god was doing to them and as young as we are we kept running our mouth insulting them they preserved the button some of them today look at great men like papa people like billy graham still alive these men serve god to the end let's not insult them and not be able to reach 10 years in consistency that's the song my very powerful song that's the last song we'll sing this night when it's all been said and done there is just one thing that matters did i live my life i can't remember it again. did i live my life for you when it's all been said and done listen all my treasures will be nothing the cheap and the duplex only what i've done for love's reward will stand the test of time am i against prosperity no but if that's all you can give a generation if all you can give your child is secular education and a degree you have failed lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find precious gold in Mary clay turning sinners into saints and I will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've told me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life is gone listen we're not going to be here forever no matter how you don't want to believe me nobody there is no man on earth who is 200 years old 200 years ago none of us on earth today was on earth your life foolishly we owe our generation and our children a debt I will never except God takes my life but it will not be when I'm alive that I'll see darkness loom over the nations of the earth if it means my life going for it let it go but the ordinances of the kingdom must be preserved in our generation. This is ministry. If you are not ready for this, don't jump around and talk nonsense. A lady sent me a text today, passionately. She may be following, listening. And she said, Apostle, she's from my village. She said, Apostle, come to my village. Why have you not come? I said, don't worry. You think I won't come there? I'm coming. God is counting on you listen carefully i'm rounding up god is counting on you 
I'm not a man of God, doesn't matter. There are souls. If God planned that in Pastor Alpha's lifetime, you are supposed to save 100 million people. Do you know if you save 20 million people, the world will clap for you. But it's when you get to heaven, God will say you left 80 million people to go to hell because you did not manifest. If God has anointed you to heal one million people and you documented 100,000 testimonies, they will register you in the Christian Hall of Fame. But when you get to heaven, you hear nonsense. Our works will be tried by fire. Let's make business with God. This wastage of time. Let us start with our Jerusalem, Zaria. Let us start with Nigeria. You see what is happening in Nigeria? You know what most of us are doing? What is happening in this nation? Those who are for A, those who are for B. But the preservers of the ordinances of God know that there are spirits. They can read the writings on the wall. That this is not an issue of north, south, east or west. This is the devil eyeing a generation that wants to love God. And the preservers of the truth say, it doesn't matter where I come from. Lord, it is your kingdom that must be established. Can we take a few minutes to pray tonight? Rise up on your feet. There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who draws on Jesus, they will be saved. In the next two minutes, hold hands together and let's pray over Zaria. Lord, we are preservers of the ordinances of God in Zaria. Let's start with our city. Let's start with our location. Revival. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lord, we pray the glory of God across Saria City, across Savo, across Prison, across Shika. In the name of Jesus, your ordinances in this land is preserved. Preserved in our campuses. Preserved in every church. Preserved in every organization that calls upon the name of the Lord. We decree it and we declare it. Hallelujah. There's an old revival song that was. How many of you know it? I, I pray you know it. The eyes of the Father run to and fro. You know that song? He's searching the earth. He's looking for those who make intercession on behalf of the nation. Those who will rise up and pray. Stand on the gap on behalf of our land. We're standing the gap on behalf of our land. Down on our knees, we'll take a stand and pray for the sea for our land. We'll pray for the needs of our land. The second part he says the power of darkness release our land will never prevail will never withstand the deep intercession by the people of passion those who will rise up and pray Stand in the gap on behalf of the land. We stand in the gap on behalf of 
over Zaria, we curse you. Lift your voice and pray. We curse you from region to region. The powers that keep men poor, the powers that stop the gospel from prevailing in this land, the powers that stop development, the powers that stop advancement, the powers that destroy men of God, the powers that destroy churches, the powers that destroy families, we come against you by the blood. We come against you by the blood. As the church of the Lord Jesus, we come against you. We come against you. Controlling powers over territories spirits of violence spirits of wickedness yokes burdens spells enchantments divination manipulations of the heavenly bodies we come against you in the name of Jesus the body of Christ grows Saria grows. Whether Christians, whether Muslims, we advance in this city. We are the light of the world. In the name of Jesus, everyone is blessed in this city without prejudice because of the presence of the church. Hallelujah. I know our time is gone, but can we pray for Nigeria? We are. Listen, as God looks at the map, he's looking for incense. He has found it in other locations. Zaria must represent itself in the realm of the spirit. Let God not see different localities, some villagers, and God will see an uneducated woman intercessor and check Zaria and say, Zaria, where is your incense? I'd like us to pray and say, Nigeria is my business. Nigeria is God's business. Peace to the walls. Peace to the borders. Peace in the east. Peace in the north. Peace everywhere. We fortify the borders of this territory in the name of Jesus we decree and declare we manifest our priesthood we are lampstands we are lampstands priests unto God we raise an incense of intercession over this nation Nigeria is God's own nation Nigeria amalgamated by the hand of God himself. We command from border to border the spirits of bloodshed. We curse you. We curse you. We curse you. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Let's pray against the spirit of sentiment. Are we together? Whether Christian whether Muslim, the truth is that we must live alone and we must live together. Are we together? Whether, whether Ipo, whether Yoruba, whether South South, whether Northerner, the truth of the matter is that there's nothing we can do about ourselves. We were brought by God. Let's cause the spirit of darkness. People have lost lives.
Hallelujah. There are spirits that move across places. They have destroyed several parts in Africa and they want to come to Nigeria. It's listen, if you understand this thing, it's not about north, south, east or west. It is the devil looking for your destiny and looking for your children. I like you to pray and command peace to the walls of this nation. Every state, mention the states by name. We command peace. Peace in Plateau State. Peace in Kaduna State. Peace in Lagos. Peace in Kano. Peace in Abuja. Peace in Bauchi. I see a lot of chains, chains, demonic oppressions. The power of God is already moving, but we are going to shout the name Jesus. Listen, listen. Every time the Lord shows me this, I see angels and I see the movement of the angelic right now. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. Many of you will literally feel like electricity running through your body and those devils there is no hiding place tonight are you listening to me how many of you believe there is no hiding place tonight there is no hiding place at the count of three my god you will confirm your word everyone under any yoke any spell any enchantment at the count of three let the power of god Bring such a one inside and outside. Let the angels of the Lord move at the count of three. Are you ready to shout now? One, two, three. Oh, I cast out devils. Go, 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 go. I expose the power of darkness. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost, let the fire of the Holy Ghost fall. Let the fire bring her. Leave her, leave her, leave her, leave her. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost. Satan, get lost. Satan, get lost. some of you you will run out here by the influence of the Holy Ghost no man will stop you by the influence of the Holy Ghost is the fire of God it will happen to some people from outside outside the fire of God is falling and even inside but I want you to know as I begin to chant in the spirit there's no hiding place for any devil tonight so get take a part Lord, let your power move. Every power, every force, 
of darkness. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let it fall. I release the fire. Leave them, leave them, leave them, ushers. Leave them alone. You will come out by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will bring you out from your seat. The Holy Ghost will bring you out from your seat. The Holy Ghost will bring you out from your seat. The Holy Ghost will bring you out. Hallelujah. Now, there are some of you that see men come to sleep with you in dreams and oppress you. They call it spirit husband and spirit wife. I don't care what the name is. Right now, there is fire. Lift your hands, everybody. Responsible for failure. Responsible for delay. Listen. Listen. At the count of three, the Lord showed me in a vision. This one will hit many people. Tonight is a night of deliverance. Many of you do not know. This is what is responsible for your setback. I already see angels standing in front and outside. Listen, it's going to, you know, you will not be able to stand it. It's a fire. Are you ready now? At the count of three, some of you will not finish shouting Jesus. Lord, I pray. You said if I can speak it, you will do it. I stand under this apostolic unction. Every manifestation of the devil at the count of three. One, two, three. Go for Russia. Regressia. Go for Yeta.
for this purpose was the son of god made manifest that he may destroy put to an end the power of god is still falling i tell you devils are under major attack by post attack the angels are walking don't wait till you fall down receive don't wait till you fall down has nothing to do with falling yeah. 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 This was a sound that I had in the spirit. That's why I'm singing it. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. bring her it's time for her deliverance i command you to come i command you to come don't force her she will come by the power of the holy ghost come come and stand here yeah. 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 listen a scripture entered my spirit he said how all inspiring are your ways through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit when light enters you it makes you a madman tonight is a night of major deliverance major 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 Hallelujah. Leave her alone. Stand there. Stand there. Listen. Listen to me. Everybody look at me. Please. The word of God is not a lie. God cannot be joking with you. Anytime you take your Bible, I told God my life and this ministry will be a demonstration of the book of Acts. It's the Acts of the Holy Ghost. Sir King Salama, Salama. He's called the Prince of Peace. Salama. Hallelujah. Leave her alone. Be still. Stand in one place now. Sir King Salama, your time in this body is over. Your time in this body is over. Now, in the mighty name of Jesus, out of her now. Come out of her. Out of her. Sir King Salama, out. Come out. The fire of the Holy Ghost. He make his angel spirits and his ministers flames. Leave her now. She's free. Sarkin Salama. 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 Salama, Salina Cabo, Yabo, Serkin Salama, Lina Cabo, Yabo, Serkin Salama, Salama, Salama. Your time is up. This is Koinonia. The mighty name of Jesus. Come out now. Out of her. Yeah, boy. Listen. Listen. The Lord is showing me an arrow coming from outside this country. This is what affected this boy. This thing has tied this gentleman's life. Leave him. Leave him. Come 
back here. Come back here. Now. Sorry, everybody. Come back here. Many of you, listen. Many of you do not know that wickedness is real. You have allowed films to, to, to spoil your mind. If you don't take, I tell you, whatever is stopping, one of the things I will be doing tonight is breaking the curse of marital delay. Oh, the devil, it will answer tonight. Look at, it's already happening. Come out! Come out! This guy has a violent spirit. A violent spirit. The mighty name of Jesus. Every lecker hole you have over this body. I challenge you right now. You will leave him. The fire of God is against you. It's time for you to go out. Out of him. Out. Shall the captives be delivered and the prey be taken from the mighty. But thus saith the Lord. Let her go right now. Thou foul devil. Come out. Come out. So pray take a pariada baladala. Sarkin salama. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Let me tell you what the Lord is showing me about this gentleman. This guy, listen, listen, please. This guy has a very, very colorful destiny. But do you know what I just saw? From his head to his toe. How many of you have read the story of Lazarus? That's what I saw. And he was tied with snakes from his head to his toe. This is what I'm seeing right now. See, do you know that the challenges many of you are going through is not ordinary? It's because nobody has told you. But tonight there is a God to set you free. This is spirit husband. This is what is stopping this lady from getting married. Out. Come out of her. Out now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your time is over. I'm seeing an army officer. I'm army officer. In the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. Shekataba. Brentoko Prikata. Out of her right now. This is the spirit of lust. Go prosketaliada. Be gone. There is no hiding. I tell you something. See, the mistake the devil made was to allow you come in here tonight. I don't care whether you are wherever. If you came here tonight, if except God lied to us in the Bible. But if he told us the truth, there will be a performance in your life tonight. Sirkin Salama. Come out. Out of her right now. Salama. Salama. Listen, let me tell you what happens in meetings like this. Some of you, because of this demon spirit, the one to start pushing you to go out or to run away, you, you better stay and let God help you. The devil is a liar tonight. Are you listening to me? Okay, I didn't finish with this guy. Watch what will happen to this brother. He's not looking at me. Oh. He's not looking at me. Just calm down. Stay in one place. I'm not speaking to him. Don't, don't worry. Stay in one place. You can't go anywhere. You come here. This is a, the head of a snake I'm seeing. Right to his foot. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
the fire of the Holy Ghost sets you free right now from your head to your toe. I lose you. I lose you. He's going to cough out something outside. Take him outside. He's going to go and cough out something. Sarakin Salama 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 Come out of her right now in the name of Jesus. Devil of darkness. Sarkin Salama Salama There's someone that has a problem, a heart problem, heart problem. That was your request, heart, something in your heart. I don't know what it is. The Lord is showing me. Please remember I told you, don't waste our time. Please. There's a lot of things we have to do this night. Heart. Something pertaining your heart. If you are still thinking about it, you are not the person. Please, quickly. Salama, yeah. Salama. Salama, yeah. Hallelujah. Ah, ah. See, there is a lady. Now, don't feel embarrassed at what I'm about to say. You see snakes in your bathroom. Ladies' bathroom. Who is that person? Come out. Come out. This has been an issue. You have not shared it with people. Snakes, you are you see it. Who is the person? Please. Salama. Salama. Yeah. You are not the only one, no. You are not the only one. This is the problem. God, God is ready to deliver you. Look, this is a family. Are you listening to me? This is not. This is an apostolic ministry. So there is, we are here, we are a family. When God is mentioning your case, forget about what, what issue of shame. Issue of shame is out of the way. Hallelujah. What's wrong with your heart? Asthma. Asthma. Is asthma really a heart? This one, I'm seeing a heart problem. But I'll pray for you. Be healed right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Healed. Listen, I'm going to pray for you people. God is doing Come out of her now. Out. Come out of her now, devil of darkness. The time is up. Just hold my hands. With both of your hands, the fire of God will hold it as tight as you can. It cannot stand, it will leave you because you are destined for greatness. Once I see it in the spirit, it must go, for light cannot hide in darkness. Aha, I see you now. Out, go. Go, Kapotoka, Reketaria, Mambroscote, Reketeria Daba, Boseketalia. Out, come out of her. Out of her right now. Sarkin Salama. Look at me. Two things God is doing. Hold my hands. Hold it. Do you believe you want God to set you free? Sarkin Salama. Look at my eyes. You just look at my eyes. Try to look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Devil of darkness. Go! There is no hiding. For there is a name that is above every other name. What did she come out for? The same thing? Why were you afraid? Don't be afraid, eh? You hear? Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Both of your hands. Look at me. Can you shout Jesus as loud as you can? Go ahead. Jesus. 
Salama. You are free. Salama. Salama, yeah. Be delivered right now. I set you free. Now. Do you know what is happening to this lady? If I tell you, some of you will not believe. For every shout that she's making is demons that are going. When she's done, she'll be quiet. <laughs> now, leave her. Fire upon you right now out of her this lady has a great destiny this is a snake this is what i'm seeing this is a whole snake mighty snake the lord is against you let her go now That is above all names. Hold my hands, my dear. Hold my hands. No, I'm not speaking to her. Don't worry. Come, hold my hands. I'm not speaking to her. Don't worry. You people do not understand spiritual things. You are spiritual people here. Come, hold my hands. The demon knows what it means, what I'm saying. Salama, yeah. Salama. Hurry up, please save our time. We, we don't have much time. Salama. Hold my hands. Don't tap it. Hold it. Out now. Salama, yeah. Salama. Watch the way this demon will live. Come, see. Listen. You will go on your knees. You will bow to the king of kings and go. Simple. You will go on your knees, bow to the king, and off you go. Sir King Salama. Salama. Salama, yeah. Listen, this is not jamboree. As I see my father do it, don't go and try it. You will die for nothing. This is not child's play. Hallelujah. Don't you think we're just, no, I'm not one of those ministers. I can't come and waste your time. God is too serious. Are you listening to me? Now lift your hands. Many of you do not know. Listen, please, now is the time to stand both for yourself. If you are a lady here, there is no reason why you should not be lifting your hands. marriage is a blessing it's not a curse as I, I as i talk as i talk because you see I, I see a sword of fire leaving my mouth i want to break certain demonic things many of you don't know what is stopping you and your loved ones for some of you is a row in your family many people have told you nothing just just hope one day no we don't do that nonsense in this place now faith is lift your hands hallelujah listen the moment we shout the name jesus some of you listen you will testify whatever is happening to you here will locate all your loved ones around listen the reason is because there are ordinances of darkness 
that are keeping some of you. Your parents took you to places in the name of protection and that devil will not let you go. The Lord instructed me to do this. Hallelujah. If you are here or your loved ones, there has been delay. Men come, they go. Or maybe you have a child and you are thinking you will not marry. That devil is a liar this night. Are you listening to me? So don't just stand for yourself alone. Don't say it does not concern me. Don't be foolish. Hallelujah. Are you ready now? You will see the demonstration of the power of the spirit. Kai, because see, I'm seeing blood. I'm seeing blood dripping on the ground. Let me tell you what this means. There are covenants and ordinances. This is what the Lord is showing me. But my Bible says the blood of Jesus speaketh better things. Better things. At the shout of the name Jesus, the demons responsible for any marital delay, God, you said if I speak it, you will do it. Right now, at the count of three, it will hit some of you in a mighty way inside and outside lord let nobody be spared one two three break 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 ushers bring them out ushers bring them out break 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 the yoke be broken the yoke be broken the yoke i release you i release you i release you i release you every cause of marriage over your family tonight be free be free. Be free. Don't, don't take at her. Don't take at her. Time to get married. Hey, kapa, ba, 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 ba. Bring them out. Don't wait till you come out. The power of God is setting you free where you are. Yes. 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 Ordinances. I'm seeing altars on fire. Altars on fire, altars on fire, altars on fire. I set them. If I be a servant of God right now, I set every demonic altar on fire. It will burn tonight. I release you. I release your family. I release you inside and outside. I release you. I release you into your marital destiny. The curse is lifted. I release your sisters. I release your brothers by the fire of the Holy Ghost. I release you. I release you. I release you. Just receive. I release you. I release you. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I got a text from someone. I mean, they brought someone who was sick. Who was that person? I can't remember now. A sick person. No, they sent, I remember they sent me a text that they would bring the sick person. Please save our time for God's sake. We're still going to minister to the sick. Hallelujah. Let that lady go free. Now, devil, let her go free now. Let her go free. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost upon you. Let her go free right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Everybody say, I receive. Yes, it's happening to you. Now, please listen. I want to pray for terminal diseases. Terminal diseases. All kinds of terminal diseases. Please, you brought someone or you came here with a terminal disease. Come out quickly. Terminal, only terminal diseases. Please, let's save time. Can we do that? God is locating people. There are some of you, God, has, God is already terminal diseases. Please come out quickly, quickly. Quickly. I beg you, if you can run, run. Save time, please, please. As you come out here, say, Lord, it comes. I hope you know what terminal diseases are. to God. Wave that sickness bye-bye because it's going forever. I'm not afraid. Healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now all of you because of time. Listen. Can you just hold your hands together? If you can. I'll just minister to you at once. Please. If you came here believing God. Then know that it will end. Hallelujah. There is an angel standing here. And there is an angel of the Lord standing here. Please listen. When we begin to minister to the sick, if we call a case and you came with the person, please make sure you come. Especially if the person cannot speak English for our mothers. So that we can hurry up, okay? The power of God will come upon some of you. But it really doesn't matter. That devil is going right now. The spirit is called the spirit of infirmity. Hallelujah. After I count three, you will say, I am healed. When that happens, it's like electricity. It will pass with power all around this place. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Oh, Porto, be free. Go, 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 go. Coming out, this is go, 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 go.
go by the fire of the Holy Ghost go 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 come back with testimonies come back with the testimony by the fire of the Holy Ghost come back with the testimony come back with the testimony Come back with the testimony. 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 I speak to you, all of you. Come back with the testimony. Come back with the testimony. Hallelujah. Say I'm healed. Go back to your seats. You can check yourselves. Please make sure you check yourself. Go to the hospital if you need. I know someone with HIV was healed. Anyone who has been, anyone with any CG, see the power of God is, is breaking from inside. Some of you are outside here. You are not receiving. People inside are receiving and they are leaving you. Listen anyone with any academic issue the senate has refused to answer between now and the next 14 days i command them to answer anyone who is at the verge of probation listen anyone at the verge of probation i pick you from where you are and i bring you back as a student in this school Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray for you. Any cause you did not fail. Listen. See, believe oh, any cause you did not fail, but you went to the board and you saw F. I change it. I said I change it. Man to kapala kuzita. I change it, Kato Pratishi. I change it. Hallelujah. Any man, I don't care who, who is molesting and oppressing people in every in any department or any faculty, whether supervisor or whoever, I instruct them to begin to favor you now. Hallelujah. Now listen carefully. Those inside, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm standing out because I want those outside to appreciate this meeting. Now I'm going to pray for you. Some of you, I'm seeing chains on the heads of, we are dealing with academic issues now. Hallelujah. Listen. I want you to lift your hands. Many of you will feel like fire burning your head. If that, wait, I'm going to count three. When that happens to you, Listen, this one will affect a lot of people. There are some of you that are first class materials. But because of this wicked thing, you were excellent in secondary school. It's not that you are bad. Let me tell you, those days will be restored. Because listen, listen, listen. I'm going to pray for you. Hallelujah. When I count three, inside and outside, with all your heart, shout, I receive. For some of you, that will be the last thing you will remember. Something will happen to you that will change your life. Are you ready now? Please, with all faith. One, two, three. Receive it now. Receive it. Take it. I restore you. Take it. 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 Inside. Inside. Take. Receive it inside. Receive it inside. Outside. Receive it. Receive it inside. Take it inside. Take it inside. At the back, inside. The angel of the Lord is touching people. At the back, outside here. At the back, take it. Take it, take it. Take it, take it, take it. Take it. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Many of you will go back now and your academics will surprise you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now listen. 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 I want all of you to think about a cause that has been troubling you because I'm about to make it to bow now. Just listen, listen. I'm working as God is. Just, just think of it in your mind just once and bring it under the lordship of Christ because I'm about to open, I'm about to tell it to open up for you. Are you ready? It's already happening to this sister. Now listen. Every department, every faculty in Amadubelo University, that cause that is threatening you right now, when I shall bow, many of you feel as if your head will open up. Are you ready now? In the name of Jesus, bow! 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 In the name of Jesus, bow! Bow! In faculty of medicine, bow! Faculty of engineering, bow! Environmental design, bow! Education, bow! Social sciences bow. Sciences bow. All the faculties in Congo bow. Every other faculty bow. Anyone with a missing script. Problem of missing script. I stand tonight under this unction. And I command, wherever your paper is, where, except you didn't write that exam, wherever your paper is, just as the donkey of Kish was found, I command that paper to be found now. <laughs> Hallelujah. For all those whose assessments have been bad, listen, for this exam, for all those whose assessment have been bowed, have been, uh, that are bad, in the name of Jesus, I release makeup test, makeup assignment, in the name of Jesus. May the Lord touch the hearts of the lecturers, no matter how hardened they are. Hallelujah. All of you shout, I will excel. Say it one more time. I will excel. Say excellence is my portion. Say I refuse failure. Say I refuse failure. I take you from pass. From third class. I take you into. Some of you are, are trusting. Let me tell you. Any class you need to step up. I step you up right now. I know some of you are doubting. Do not doubt the creative power of God's word. It created the heavens and earth. I said I stepped you. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For all those, whether you or your loved one, they've been writing jam after jam, wayek after wayek. You are looking for papers, it has refused to come. If God be God, if there is a God in this place, listen, those of you who are about to, whether jam, whether DE, you have papers that you need to make up. I stand as a servant of God. I give you the paper you are looking for. Those writing jam, I prophesy, write your last jam in the name of Jesus. Those writing whether wayek or whatever to make up. And there are some of you who are about graduating. But the papers you have are causing trouble. And right now you already have a problem at the Senate. Mercy. 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 You must graduate. You must graduate. Let something be done in your life that has not been done in this school. God is visiting people. Thank you, Jesus. 
God is opening people's files, I tell you. God is visiting people. Don't stand there doubting. God will bless others and leave you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything called mental blockage or exam fever, all this nonsense that comes on people, you will read and even do tutorial for others. In the name of Jesus. That spirit that makes you to forget things in the exam hall that you will only remember after you finish right right now i cast that spirit in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus you cannot read like a slave i forbid you from reading like a slave in the mighty name of jesus I tell you, God is visiting people in a mighty way this night. God is visiting people in a mighty way. Hallelujah. In your academics, I don't care how bad it has been. I don't care what has happened from today. Step into that, that dream you saw, that your, your results has never looked like it. You have been seeing it. Enter the reality of it. Many of you have dreams. You see four points, but you write exam and see one point. I curse that devil in the name of Jesus. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I tell you, God is visiting people. Hallelujah. Now, please, everybody who is sick. You came here with any kind of disease. I'm about to rebuke it right now, please. We don't have time. Our time is fast spent. But God is going to visit inside. Are you still with me? Are you still with me inside? Now, those outside here, I want, I want to pray. Everybody lay your hands anywhere it's hurting. If it's a part of your body, you cannot lay your hands on, lay your, hands on your chest. Whether fibroids, whether growths, whether cancer, whether blindness, whether deafness, whether lameness, whatever it is, I don't care. If it followed you here, it made a mistake because it's going to leave you right now. Are you listening to me? Some of you, what you call sickness is actually oppression. Because I see that there are many ladies with all kinds of sicknesses. People think you are careless, you are not. That devil will leave you. Hallelujah. Some of you have HIV. It's not like you slept around. You too, you don't know how it came. Some of you have all kinds of cancerous growth. There are people they've told you you, you cannot. I, I, after I finish this, I'm going to specially pray for barren people. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, listen. All of you inside, lift your hands. Lift your hands for that healing. I'm going to count three and the power of God will begin to come on sick people. Just those inside. Those inside. Hallelujah. The angels of God are moving inside. I see them. At the count of three inside. I tell you many sicknesses will disappear right now. The moment I count three, just take that hand and lay it where it's hurting. And start receiving your miracle. Are you ready? One, two, three. Receive right now. Take it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now lay your hands there. Receive your healing right now. Receive your healing right now. Many of you are feeling like electricity. Is the healing anointing of the Holy Spirit. It's going through you. Begin to do what you couldn't do before. Those outside now, lay your hands there. Are you ready to receive? That devil will not follow you. Now in the name of Jesus, those outside here, receive. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Growth disappear. Terminal diseases go. Asthma go. Asthma, go. Every deaf ear be open now. Every blind eyes be open. If your hair and one leg is shorter than the other, let the other one grow out now to equal sizes. In the name of Jesus. Every lady problem, 
every woman problem irregular menstruation ends now 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 the fire of God is burning I tell you the fire of God is burning every lump in the breast disappears now disappears now disappears now every growth in any part of your body every growth i cause that growth to its root right now in the name of jesus i cause that growth to its root right now in the name of jesus thank you jesus any pain in any area of your body i rebuke it any trace of mental disorder whether for you or for your loved ones, wherever they are, and if you are here, let the power of God touch you now. Let the fire of God touch you now. Let the fire of God touch you now. Shake it, kapa. Reke te koto to 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 baka. Ziko tu riapata. Zeke te. Let them go. Let them go. Out. 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 Out every kind of mental problem whether it has manifested or not out 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 go go every curse every covenant thank you jesus hallelujah hallelujah now any woman here or your sister or you who has been barring please connect now is the time we want to release miracle children right now. I don't know whether they have been barren for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. The Bible says, and God opened the womb of Anna. Listen, I want you to stand. You are a lady here, you lived a promiscuous life. And then you found out that, okay, some things happened. Maybe you lost your womb or something. God is about to give you a new one right now. I don't care what the problem is. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to cause barrenness and impotency, low sperm count, all this demonic infertility, whatever, I, I don't care. If it has a name, it's going to answer this night. Are you ready? Everybody inside, make sure you are with me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Whether for you or for your loved ones, right now, my Father, in the name that is above all names, lift your hands. I pray. There are some of you, listen. Some of you do not know that there are already projections of barrenness on you. It's just that you have not married yet. So don't say until you are married. The devil is wicked. God brought you to set you free. You'll be surprised. Hallelujah. Inside and outside, you're going to shout Jesus. And God is going to visit some people. There are some of you, God will visit you not for you, but on behalf of other family members. And I tell you, you will see people take in. Are you listening to me? Do you believe this? At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus and you'll see what will happen. Are you ready? Thank you, Holy Ghost. At the count of three, let your power move across inside and outside. Are you ready? This will happen to many people because there is the curse of barrenness. And standing for anybody at the count of three, shout it with all your heart. Are you ready? One, two, three. Take it, take it, take it. Take it, Supokoto, Rekete Keriata, Barriness, go, 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 inside, inside, fire, fire is falling inside, outside, fire is falling, the curse of barrenness, Tokoto Peketa, for your loved ones, every barren woman, receive children, receive children, receive children, any impotency. Whatever it is, low sperm count, infertility, whatever it is in the name of Jesus, I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Please stay with me. Sita kapalako shopete. Zimbato krostu palakato sepete. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I want to pray and prophesy. We want to talk on the issue of finances right now. Everybody stand up and take this very seriously. We apologize for the lightning. I believe that maybe some hitches here and there. We'll soon round up. Hallelujah. While this is happening, please let's have all the prayer requests outside here. Look at me. See, listen, look up. The secret of financial blessing is in your giving life. Are you listening to me? I don't care what you are doing. The secret, if you are not a giver, whatever you are seeing now is only a deceit. It won't last. Are you listening to me? I want to minister to you. How many of you know that God is not glorified in anybody's poverty? How many of you are tired of the situation of some of your family members? You know, you know what? Some of your parents, one job here, two months, they've driven them away. This is a curse. The problem is that pastors like sugarcoating things. They just say, oh, it's well. There is a difference between faith and foolishness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to challenge you. Everybody, please hold a seat. Bring out a seat. You know us in this place. If you don't believe, don't bring it out. I want to break the curse of poverty. Don't you think, please, I, I, if you have something, share with your neighbor. Please, please, please. Bring out a seat. Don't murmur and grumble. Just keep your seat back, please. We are a blessed people. We are a blessed people. Look at me. Look at me, sister. Look at me. Tell her to look at me. Look at me. Just tell her to look at me. Don't worry. Leave her. Look at me. Come out of her, devil of darkness. Ah, leave you alone. Praise God. See, while I was praying for this meeting, I saw this. Please listen. I saw a particular family. This is a revelation that the Lord showed me. And I saw them around the river. Hallelujah. Around the river with 500 naira. I don't know. I, I'm not going to mention them so that you don't think maybe I'm talking about a church or a ministry. We don't do that. But I saw some people seeming men of God or whatever around that they were trying to do something about financial prosperity. You see that? They killed chicken. They killed one other animal. I think goat or something. And they were invoking things on the person. And the Lord said, save this family. I saw it in the vision that the Lord showed me. There is nothing we will do here that God did not instruct. Hallelujah. Please, if you do not have a revelation of this, give your money. You won't go to hell. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bring out something and connect it. I want to pray for you. You will lift it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Inside and outside, just lift it up. Okay, people are oppressed. Ah, people are oppressed. Listen, just lift it. Many of you, the fire will fall on you and your sacrifice. It will fall on you. See, it's poverty I want to attack. It's a spirit. Don't be mistaken about it. It's already happening to people. Everybody lift it. Please, make sure there is a seed. It will be your contact. Clash the symbol for me, please. At the clash of the symbol. Ah. Are you ready now? My father, I pray, it's your desire to prosper us. People have suffered. Families have suffered. Right now, spirit of poverty, go! 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 Keep the offering up. Go! Go, 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 go. For your family, I burn that spirit of poverty. It's a curse. Leave God's people. Poverty causes laziness. Poverty causes lack of failure. Lift your seed. It's your sacrifice. My God and my King, if God be God, I pray poverty be broken in the name of Jesus. Be broken. Shoketeketa. Rekotopokotupaka. 
so protocoto reketekete rekoto preketeka jobless go 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 hallelujah to me my people made a covenant with me by sacrifice I command doors of uncommon, unusual, inexplainable, and shall prosperity. Let it be open now for you and for your family. That joblessness ends now. Mm, God is visiting families. God is visiting families. Any contract that has been revoked right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, I return it back to your loved ones. The curse of poverty be broken. Don't say I'm a student. Become rich in the name of Jesus. Become rich, blessed, wealthy. I program your spirit as surely as the Lord lives. God is visiting people. Twenty-one angels standing in this place. I don't know what I'm seeing. I'm seeing it, the whole of this place. The whole of this place lift your hands because god is about to visit you some of you it's not just financial issues god will join everything and visit you as soon as i shout receive it right from here down to this row this is what god is showing me the power of god will come in a strong way lift your hands all of you in the name of jesus at the count of two just two the wind will blow one two let it blow right now. Take it. 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 Don't wait till you fall. This has nothing to do with falling. It has nothing to do with falling. Receive by faith. Hallelujah. The Lord is visiting people. I don't know what the case is but when i touch you just know god is visiting you in the name of jesus in the name of the lord jesus in the name of the lord jesus the angels of the lord are pointing people to me in the name of the lord jesus in the name of the lord jesus aha now out of her come out come out of her your time is up your spirit out out now pain go come out supokoto pekata likata don bretons kepanda kriata lord visit them ushers help me visit them please help them help them ushers so that they don't fall down one another visit them visit them God is visiting your mother right from the States. Oh no, in UK. God is visiting her right now. Hallelujah. Madam, God is about to locate you. Stand up, please. Stand up. Your time of breakthrough has come. Come and stand here, please. I don't know you, but look at me. Three things the Lord is going to do for you. Number one, God is going to change your financial story in a way that will surprise you. Number two, who is sick? Somebody is seriously sick in your family. It's my husband. I have. It's your husband. Because this is what I'm seeing. This is what is sugar? Sugar. Yes, yes. What is sugar? What is sugar? I'm hearing sugar. Diabetes. Diabetes. Yes. Do, you, do I know him? Have I met your husband? I'm hearing sugar. The Holy Spirit is telling me sugar. Diabetes. Is that correct? 
I'm going. I'm BP, BP. I'm BP. Look at me. The third thing God is going to do. Uh, are you building? Are you building? Madam, look at me. Yes. Are you? Yes. The Lord is saying that building will be completed. Yes. These three things. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Because you have lifted this seed. Many of you. See. <sighs> Father, visit her right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Visit families by the power of the Holy Ghost. Visit families in the name of Jesus. See, I tell you, I'm not going to touch everybody. But if I do touch you, just know that God has visited you. It doesn't matter what the situation is. It will bow to the name of Jesus Christ. Bring this sister for me, this one. Yes, come. Did I lay hands on you? It's time for God to visit you. Are you listening to me? Take it. It's over. Whatever it is, it's over. Right now. This fair lady, come. Please. I don't know what is it. Come. Don't see. You people should not be angry at God. God, it, I must not touch you. Do you understand? You can see that we don't have all of the time. Eh? Look at me. I'm going to end a lot of things in your life. Seven things in total. One by one, God is going to show you. Five of them. You wrote... You wrote seven prayer points. Yes, sir. How many prayer points? You... Seven. The Lord says seven things is visiting you and is bringing on. Was I there when you wrote it? Seven things you wrote. Seven things the Lord is visiting them. Lord, that is it. It ends right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Seven things the Lord is visiting you. Somebody wrote 13 prayer points. 13. 13. 13. You wrote 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 13. Who is that? Come. You are the one. Come. Was I there when you were writing it? 13 prayer points. 13 prayer points. What did you write about your father? My family. Yes. Peace in my family. Peace in your family. There is fight. Was I there when you wrote it? What did you write about the issue of money? Last week when I went home, my sister was complaining that there is... Because I'm seeing the Lord is showing me your prayer points. That's why I'm reading it to you. Was I there? There's no money. You went home. Even transport to come back. Well, not somebody. Somebody gave me a lift. This is, I, I, God said I should do to prove to you that this is not just guesswork. My God, in the name of Jesus, locates this lady. Your situation ends once and for all. Regina, 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 Regina. Who is Regina? Regina. Ah. No, Regina. Don't miss your miracle. You are Regina. You. Ah. No, this Regina is here. Oh. Your name is Regina. Where's your mother? She's in Lagos. What's wrong with her? I don't know. Pray for your mother. Eh? Because this is an attack I'm seeing on her. Eh? This is an attack I'm seeing on her. Be careful. Don't let any lecturer talk stories and ask you to come and visit him in the night. Does it make sense to you? Yes, sir. Does it make sense to you? Believe it. Eh? And then get into God with all your heart. Are you listening to me? I want to pray for you. This like a Jessica Christian attitude become a genuine Christian right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Grace to pray. Grace. Taiwo, God is visiting your mother. Just look at me. God is visiting your mother. Lord, visit her in the name of Jesus Christ. Right from here. Just as a point of contact, God is touching her in Lagos. Visit her in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Visit her. This, this girl, eh? Bring this lady crying. Lord, end this captivity in the name of Jesus. This lady's family do a lot of diabolic things. Are you listening to me? And they have put they have put things in this girl as a medium. This girl you are seeing, she's not the person you are seeing standing here. Hmm? This girl is very old. She's not as young as you are seeing, as in 
I mean in the spirit realm. I'm seeing somebody that is up to 800 years old. Hallelujah. Are you seeing? Look at, look at this. Bring her. This is what is wrong. They, they invoke spirits of ancestors into this girl. Come and stand here. Because they did it in such a way. Listen. They did it in such a way. And this is the invocation. That no matter how much you are a man of God, you will not see it. This is what they did. Look at. I've seen it. I'm seeing it in the spirit. Look at. This is why this cry is happening. They, they programmed it. I don't know how it is. Many men of God have attended to this lady. They didn't see it. I don't know why. Because as I'm standing now, I'm seeing a tree. This is a tree I'm seeing. A very tall tree. Keep quiet. This lady, you see, she doesn't even know if this lady gets angry, she can beat even five guys put together. Are you listening to me? She, 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 she will, I mean, beat you and put you on the ground that you will cry. Even her, right from a small age, she has been seeing this strange power. This is not normal. I need to rebuke that. Some of you are like that. You just think it's your family. You beat all your classmates in nursery school. Beat all your classmates. In. You are happy about it. Hallelujah. I have to set this girl free. I'm seeing rings on her legs, rings on her hands, uh, ring on her eyes, even on her eyes here. What kind of nonsense is this rubbish thing? Hmm? Keep quiet. This noisy spirit. You will go out now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hmm? Keep quiet. Keep quiet. Uh, two of us won't be talking. You are going to leave. There is a legal access that is given to you. But the Bible says the captives of the mighty shall be delivered. And listen, leave her. Please leave her. Don't hold her. Look at me. Listen. Behave yourself right now. I'm going to rebuke this some it will create a ripple effect on all our family members because they mentioned their names as they were killing chicken this is what i'm seeing one by one they will mention their names and kill chicken leave her leave her leave her leave her come back just leave her she will come back by herself this thing is more than 800 years this is what i'm telling you am i wasting your time Am I wasting your time? Leave her, leave her. When she's done, she'll come and stand here. These are demonic things. Don't be distracted by all this drama. Let's concentrate on what God is doing, please. Mama, come. Come and stand here. Your time of visitation has come. I don't know what you came here for. Eh? your time of what did you come here for you are barren is that yes sir you are barren how many years 13 years i'm seeing one and three mm -hmm. how many years 13 years 13 years you have been barren your 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 situation has come to an end yeah. hallelujah mm. lay your hands on your stomach what did the doctors tell you is in your stomach? Nothing. They will do scan. Nothing. But you are feeling movement in your body. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. In the night when you are sleeping, it will be as if a man wants to sleep with you. Yes, sir. A man comes to sleep yes, and it has even affected your relationship. Yes, sir. Eh? You don't even have affection for him. Yes, yes. Do you know me? No, sir. Have you ever seen me? No. Your time of freedom has come this night. Because this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a stone. A stone inside your stomach. You used to have pain when you sleep. Sharp pain. This is a stone I'm seeing. Hmm? This thing is a demonic thing. Lay your hands. 
I open this womb right now. Let the womb take in by the power of... Take it right now. All right, it's time for you to go. Now, in the name of Jesus, I challenge you, come and stand here. There's no time. See, demons can distract. If you waste time on them, they are going to distract you. Are you listening to me? All these things are distractions. Learn this. This is not just a place to receive. It's a place to learn. Many people focus. I'm not against all of but it's not necessary. We don't have all of this time. Are you listening to me? Come and stand here. Quickly, come and stand here. It was finance, right? Okay. Let God solve somebody's problem right now. Listen. I release you into financial blessings. 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 Hallelujah. Pastor Jakes is going to come. Bishop Stan is going to come. They are going to speak prophecies into you. Hallelujah. I wish we had time. But as they speak, please receive. Hallelujah. They will speak and while I go up there. When they are done, we'll come and pray on your request. Can you wait a few more minutes? Can you wait a few minutes? Pastor Jackson. Okay, please, ushers, just cast your offering. Cast your offering quickly. Ushers, all over. If there are no ushers, just be patient. Inside and outside. Please make sure you drop your money to only ushers. Hallelujah. Please lift up your hands. There's no time. Joining hands with Bishop and as we pray, whatever you desire, okay? Whatever giftings you've been trusting God to unlock in your life, whatever dimension of God you've been trusting God to push you into, as we pray corporately, the presence of God and the oil of God will be poured upon you in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you in Jesus' name. I give you praise in the name of Jesus, even as you have declared through your servant. Lord, as we cast this seed, may it be an end to poverty and financial hardship in the name of Jesus. You cause doors to be opened for every family represented here in Jesus' name. We stand in agreement and rebuke devourer in the name of Jesus. Devourers in form of sickness, in form of accident, we rebuke you in Jesus' name. We set everyone free. Enter into your financial liberty in the name of Jesus. Marital liberty in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me invite the ministers as we pray on the request. If you've not written your request, please write it here quickly. I want to... After this, I'm going to be inviting Uneko and his wife who are going to be dedicating and praying for their child. Hallelujah. And any other woman with child here, you're going to come out with your child. We're going to pray and speak protection after I do that very quickly. Hallelujah. Please. Very quickly. Stretch your hands while you are seated. You don't need to stand up. Stretch your hands as we pray on this request. Go ahead and pray. Father, we pray that you visit your people. Visit your people, oh God. Visit your people. Visit your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, visit families. In the name of Jesus. Grant every spiritual blessing that your people are asking for. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We pray that every prayer point here, Lord, is answered in the name of Jesus. 
We release the angels of God to bring answers and solutions to needs in the name of Jesus. Let breakthroughs come, academic blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for businesses. We ask that prayer points here about businesses, that the Lord will open up doors in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask for healing. We release the healing of God upon your lives in the name of Jesus Christ. We bring salvation into your family. The Lord visits your family in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord blesses you with peace joy in the name of jesus christ of nazareth refreshing comes from the presence of the lord refreshing comes from the presence of the lord in the name of jesus christ of nazareth every closed gate is open in the name of jesus christ of nazareth every dark cloud is rolled away in the name of jesus christ of nazareth father we thank you we give you praise we celebrate you in our lives in the name of jesus christ of nazareth hallelujah put your hands together for the lord Hallelujah. Please quickly, quickly, quickly. All the children, quickly, quickly. Please save time. We just have about five minutes or so and we're out of. Celebrate them as they come. If you know God will give you children. Please come and line up here quickly, quickly. Great are you, Lord. Greatly to be praised. All the earth will sing. Father, you reign, great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, let me pray. Please, Uneku, come up with your wife. How many of you remember them? Worship team, come on, celebrate your own. Technical, celebrate your own too. See, they're all seated together. Is that where they met? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody stretch your hands towards them. This baby is a miracle baby. I tell you. I was there in the hospital. I didn't even know the baby was on the bed. I said, where is the baby? Hallelujah. Stretch your hands and pray. Rebuke the hand of Satan. Do it as though you are praying for your own child. Rebuke the hands of Satan. This baby is blessed. Growing normally. Daddy and mommy are healthy. In the name of Jesus. We dedicate this child in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. This child will grow in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. We command this child to be an ambassador. We program his destiny to glorify Christ alone. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for peace in this house. This will only be the first child and not the only child. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Jakes and Bishop Stan, can I invite you just to come and lay hands on these children? Hallelujah. As we lay hands, all three of us will lay hands. You just lay hands. I'll come back and lay hands on them. As we lay hands on the children, we rebuke the hands of Satan. We rebuke the hands of Satan. No, let me lay hands on them before they go. We are, we are doing it, all of us. Please. Very quickly. These are instructions that God is giving. We are not just doing these things carelessly. Any child, any one child that has anything that is not of God, we cancel it right now. We cancel it right now. Eh? in the name of the Lord Jesus may the Lord visit this child let his hearing be perfected in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ see how wicked Satan can be in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ these children are blessed where is he? bring him the boy ran away because this boy wants to kill himself. It's the spirit that wants to kill him. Where is he? I tell him to stand, but he went. You see what I told you, spirits? He ran away to where? Wherever he is right now, in the name that is above all names, may the Lord visit him. You will go back and you will come and testify. Hmm? I'm seeing the fire of God on him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord visits him. You are standing on his behalf. In Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Uh -uh. Come out of this girl. Devil of darkness. 
May the Lord bless you. Madam, God is really visiting your family. May the Lord... Ah, you came out for yourself or for your child? May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I prophesy upon your life. Please stand up, everybody. Be rounding up now. Every closed door in the name that is above all names, I open it right now. Every door of failure and disappointment in the mighty name of Jesus, let that door be open now. I pray right now. Any voice that is speaking against you and your destiny, I command those voices to be silenced right now. Whatever is stopping your spiritual development, whatever is stopping your passion for God, one leg in, one leg out, I pray, I release encounters to your life. Encounters with angels. Encounters of heaven. Visions and revelations. Dramatic encounters with Jesus Christ. I pray for the spirit of prayer. May it come upon you in a mighty way. Who is this? Oh, see the boy is back. Come. Look at me. How are you? The Lord will set you free. Eh? You love Jesus. Look at me, look at me. You love Jesus. Do you like what happens to your life? Huh? Are you tired of it? Look at me. Are you tired of it? Eh? You want to be free from it? Eh? Madam, it's not this boy that is doing these things. Are you listening to me? This is a suicidal spirit. Eh? This is demonic. Because this boy is destined to be great. Are you seeing? And this is why the devil wants to destroy him. Hmm? Look at me, my brother. Why did you go away? Okay. He doesn't even know why he left. Hallelujah. The mighty name of Jesus Christ, that devil of darkness. Your time in this boy's body is over. The fire of the Holy Ghost against you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm praying for you right now. Who is Bulus? It's his uncle. Bulus is his uncle. Do, you, do I know Bulus? Where is he? Hold my hands. Father, I pray that the wickedness of men will not catch up with this boy. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, my God and my King, I pray for a dramatic visitation. Look at me. Look at me. Go to church. Join a fellowship. Huh? These bad guys that are around you, they will destroy you. I cancel your appetite for them. They are, they, are trying to, they are trying to introduce you into wheat and all of this nonsense. You will not have appetite for any of these things. Hmm? You will become an obedient and a respectful child. This hardened heart this night has been replaced with the heart of stone. Salvation comes to this family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Rahila. Who is Rahila? Do you know anybody called Rahila? What is the mean? Well, I'm hearing the name Rahila. This is your daughter? Come. How are you, my dear? Hold my hands. See a mystery. I'm going to be praying for you. But is that your sister that is going? Hold, hold on. Don't tell me. I don't want you to tell me. Hmm? Don't tell me. Don't worry. That's your sister, dear. I'm seeing light. It's leaving you and it's entering. I'm going to pray for you, but the prayer is going to affect her. Hold my hands. I set you free right now. I set you free right now. Loose, loose her from that chain. 
be loose right now. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit. There is deliverance going on in your family right now. I don't know why this is happening, but God is bringing it for you. Thank you, Jesus. Brother, look at me. Please be a gentleman, okay? Be a gentleman. Love God. Be serious with your life. You are a healer. Okay, well, you came out. Let me pray for you. The, the Lord is not giving me anything exactly. What do you want the Lord to do for you? Ah, you don't know. I'll just pray generally for you. Come. Is that okay? Lay your hands on your chest. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I command favor to your life. I command favor. Favor. Favor is one blessing that the Lord has given us here. I release it into your life right now. Yeah. Whatever has been a challenge for you, may God speak it. Yeah. Listen, when God speaks over your situation, that's all it ends. If you are here, I didn't call your case, but you came with an expectation right now in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. May the Lord visit you at that point of your need. Yeah. Every habit here that is not of God, masturbation, pornography, all of these devilish things that are destroying people, I cast it out of your life forever. I cast it out of your life forever. It will not return again. I cast it out. I cast it out of your life. Every form of immorality that stops you from entering the dimension God wants to take you, I release grace upon you. To walk in genuine holiness and purity. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your parents and your loved ones. As God visits you here, may he visit them. As God visits you here, may he visit them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we step into the seventh month, may it be a time of perfection for you. May it be a time of perfection for you. May it be a time of perfection for you. What you have not accomplished from January to June, accomplish it in July. I command promotion. I command promotion. All of you in ministry, I pray that you will see a greater anointing in your ministries. I release greater fire in your fellowships, in your churches, in your ministries. Let devils be casted out. Let the sick be healed. Let sinners be saved in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command increase and expansion for ministries here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All of you planning for marriage, I command whatever resource you need, I release it for you. Even if the man has not come, I bring him into your life. Even if the woman has not come, I bring her into your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, inside and outside, this is an opportunity for those who have never given their hearts to the Lord. Please stand up. Everybody keep standing, please. Hallelujah. The greatest miracle that can happen in this place is that you are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. You have seen the miracles and all of these things. But there are many of us that need to make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And right now, as we begin to clap, I'll count one to five. Praise God. Inside and outside, please give them space. Inside and outside, I want you to come before the Lord here. You've never given your heart to the Lord or you made a decision for Jesus once. You made a decision for Jesus once, but you found yourself derailing. Please come out and stand here in the name of Jesus. Please, leave your seat and come out. Appreciate them. They are coming. God bless you. Please rush, rush, run, run, run. Don't be afraid. 
God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. Don't be ashamed inside and outside. God bless you as you come. They are coming. Koinonia, celebrate them. Outside, make sure you don't stay back. Don't let any devil rob you of the greatest blessing. Keep coming. Keep coming. Young and old, keep coming. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep coming. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, when I do this, Selena and my sister and their roommates, please you come and stand. I'll pray for you. Hallelujah. All of you. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands, those of you in front. Thank you so much for coming. See after me, Lord Jesus. I love you. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I'm born again. I'm saved. Jesus is Lord of my life. I denounce sin and Satan from today. The Holy Spirit lives in me. I have eternal life and the gift of righteousness. And I will reign in this life. And I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that I'll never be the same again. My life is transformed in the name of Jesus. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, Attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.